ายกายตัวนี้ท้ายกายตัวนี้มองตัวนี้มองตัวนี้ด้วยไม้ตาที่ทำท้ายกายตัวนี้จะเป็นตัวมองตัวนี้ไม้ตาที่ทำท้ายกายตัวนี้จะเป็นตัวมองตัวไม้ตาที่ทำฮ guys in this video I'm gonna show you how to do what create Minecraft account Hi guys in this video I'm gonna show you how to create a Minecraft account <laughs> Hi guys! In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create Minecraft account. Hi guys! In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a Minecraft account. Hi guys! In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Minecraft account. Hi guys, hi guys. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a Minecraft account. Hi guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a Minecraft account. To get started, you want to head over to your browser. For the sake of this video, I'll be using a Chrome browser. You want to go ahead and search Minecraft. You want to go ahead and search Minecraft. You want to go ahead and search Minecraft. You want to click Enter. You want to click the first link you see here.
<coughs> so once you're here, you want to scroll down. And you want to click this link. All right. Minecraft Education Edition. So once you're here, what you want to first of all do, once you're here, what you want to do is to click on sign in. So you want to click on no accounts, create one. So you want to click on create one. <coughs> you want to go ahead and enter your email. You need an email address for this one. You want to go ahead and enter an email for this one. You can actually use a phone number to sign in. You can also use a phone number to sign up, but I'll be using my Gmail account to sign up for this account. I'll be using my Gmail account to sign up for this account. I'll be using my Gmail account. You can use your Gmail account to sign up for Minecraft. You can use phone number to sign up for Minecraft. You can use phone number. You can use phone number to you can use phone number to sign up for Minecraft. So for the sake of this video, I'll be using my Gmail account to sign up for this account. For the sake of this video, you can use phone number to sign up for your Minecraft account. But I'll be using my email. But I'll be using a Gmail to sign up for this Minecraft account. You want to click on next. So that account is not accepted. I'm going to try another one. So you can actually use your phone number to sign up for a Minecraft account or you can use your Gmail account. I'll be using my Gmail to sign up for this Minecraft account. You want to click on next. You want to go ahead and create a password. You want to go ahead and click on next. So a code, a code has been sent to this Gmail account. I'm going to step for it and enter it.
right here I have the Microsoft here I have the email verification code sent to me and here is the code four six four two I'm gonna go back and enter the code and enter the code You want to click on next and your minecraft account will be created so i have to solve this puzzle to show that i am human i'm gonna click on next All right, I've been given a test and I'm asked to pick the total. Yeah, I'm gonna pick this one right here. All right, test passed. You want to go ahead and click yes. And my Minecraft account has been created. Guys, this is how to create a Minecraft account. You can go ahead and fill in your first name, last name, your organization. Your organization, city, country, time zone, and every other thing. But for the most part, my account has been created. Guys, this is how to create a Minecraft account. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Adobe Photoshop for beginners. Hi there, welcome to the Photoshop Advanced course. Thank you so much for enrolling. My name is Afrede and I'm an expert Adobe instructor at this website and I'm so excited to have you here. You are in the right place if you are looking to learn Photoshop and together me and you are going to learn everything you need to know to get started with Adobe Photoshop. I don't want to waste much of your time because I know you are ready to get into Photoshop. But I really mention some things quickly. From the first lesson, you will be able to download all of the assets exercise file for this course. One thing I want to confess is that when I launch them, 
I know they are not going to be perfect. If there is anything we can do to make it better, let me know. If there is any tool or technique that I didn't cover that you want to see, we will make sure to create a lesson for you. So just send me a message or message connect with me on social media. We will add you on our Facebook group very soon. Now, this course absolute beginners. There's no need to have any previous Photoshop knowledge or any photography or design knowledge for that matter. We are going to start at the beginning and work our way through step by step. We are going to work through real world practical examples in Photoshop. Then we will learn the tools and features necessary to make a really amazing image. And that's pretty much it. Thank you again for enrolling and we will see you on our first class. So get ready and stay healthy. Bye. Hi there. So it's high time to join in our Facebook group. Here is a Facebook group. Binary Photoshoppers. You can simply search for binary photoshop on your Facebook search bar or I will give you this group link in the notepad site. Please check here. So here is some question about you. Number 1. How much photoshop knowledge you have? Number 2. What's your email? Which will connect it to you in every moment? Number 3. Would you help your other groupmates always? Number 4. What's the enter key? This answer will be zero one six nine. Okay, guys, so see you in our group very soon. In this video, I will go through the new features in last October release of Photoshop 2021. First of all, I am going to click on this link. So this is the latest version of Adobe Photoshop, which was released in last October 2021. Here you can try it for free for 3 days. After that, you have to pay or you can buy this app by using your credit card. In the latest version of Adobe Photoshop, the professional photography tools make it easy to do everyday edits or total image transformation across desktop and iPad. In this latest version, we can combine photos and text to create entirely new images. Here you can work with unlimited layers and masks. Those who have an iPad, you guys can start on your iPad and finish on your desktop. On this latest version, the lens blur feature now offers a more natural and realistic look when blurring an object in the foreground. This is the new Photoshop splash screen. It will use the same photo by Vanessa Rivera. Adobe Lightroom, Photoshop Express and Photoshop Camera. These apps are a family of image organization software developed by Adobe Systems for Windows. Now. I will show you some popular Adobe Photoshop keyboard shortcuts. So here you will find these default keyboard shortcuts. Click on this side. Here you can find these useful keyboard shortcuts that will help us to work faster. Especially if you prefer using the keyboard more than the mouse. Here some of the shortcuts are Ctrl plus N which helps us to open new files then you can use Ctrl plus C to copy the selected area and use Ctrl plus V to pass it to the any other document. We will use of all the shortcuts on our class. Here are some function keys for cut, copy and paste. Also show or hide brush panel, color panel, layers panel and revert fill and feather selection. And these are select tools. 
Here shift key is used for tool switch. B is move tool. C is crop tool. And I is eyedropper tool ADC. Shortcuts for Windows images. If you want to switch to previous document, press shift plus ctrl plus tab. To fit the image in the window, double click on hand tool. So these are all keyboard shortcuts. We will see elaborately and show how to use them in our classes. That's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And yeah, we will start our first class from the next video. So stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback. I will see you guys in the next video. Before you start this in Adobe Photoshop, have you ever felt fear of using Photoshop? Well, fear no more, because today we are going to take the first step in overcoming the fear. I'm really excited to start this class, because Photoshop is something that I'm really passionate about. And I'm more excited about the fact that I'm going to help you with the getting started Photoshop. So, now we are going to open Adobe Photoshop and get started. So this is our Photoshop interface and as you can see, here we have an option to drag and drop images, create new, etc etc. What we want to do is create a new template. We can do that by clicking here. So these are recent sizes that I have used earlier. On the saved section, you can save your preferable size. Here. You can find some presets of photos, then print, art and illustration, web, mobile. In this mobile section, you find many different presets for different devices. So now here we can set white and height. You can set units for the measurements of the things you will make. These are orientation. This will be your project name. You can set any name to serve this work so that you can find them easily. This is the background content. Here you can set any color as you wish. On orientation, you set both portrait and landscape. And you can take the artboard. We will not take the artboard today. Now, click on the create option. So this is the place we'll work on. So this is the end of our class today. See you all in the next class. Hi there, so it's high time to join in our Facebook group. Here is a Facebook group, Binary Photoshoppers. You can simply search for Binary Photoshop on your Facebook search bar or I will give you this group link in the notepad site. Please check here. So here is some question about you. Number 1. How much Photoshop knowledge you have? Number 2. What's your email? Which will connect it to you in every moment? Number 3. Would you help your other groupmates always? Number 4. What's the enter key? This answer will be. Zero one six nine. Okay guys. So see you in our group very soon. Preferences and customize your workspace. Welcome back to our class. Today we are going to see how to prioritize and customize the workspace. This is the area for pixels. Now from this upper section, click on edit section. From this, click on preferences. Then from this general section, click on performance. Then you will get this tab. This is the amount of your available RAM, ideal range. Then this is the amount of MB that this will use. 
you can increase or decrease the history status. This is the general section. These are the options you can choose. And from this guide section, you can delete or add new guide. Now I am going back to the interface. Then click on create new, choose custom size and choose pixel. So you can drag these sections here for doing your work easily. You can also hide them. And you can reset all this by clicking on this windows bar. Then select workspace from essential section. Click on reset essentials. Now you can see all are gone. Now again go to windows. Then select workspace. Then from essentials click on 3D and also click on graphic and web. Here you can do the 3D works. You can drag this toolbar here and there as your preferences. And by clicking on this essential section, you will get back to your workplace, same as earlier. Then you can reset all warming dialogues and reset preferences on quit. That's all for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this class. Please let me know your feedback. Hey, there is just one thing I need to go over with you. You see, in a moment, you very lightly go to be asked by you to leave a review here. Well, ratings go from 1 to 5 stars, with 4.5 being considered to be normal and good on this platform. Now I understand that some of you are way too early to have an opinion about the content of this course, right? Well, in that case, you can just choose to skip the review altogether and click on ask me later, like you can do it later. I'm saying this because I have had people leave 3 stars, thinking it meant something like neutral. Uh -uh. 3 stars means this course is really really bad, never buy a course with 3 stars average. So if you feel you haven't seen enough of this course, well just skip the review button and click on ask me later. Thanks. Bye. Preferences and customize your workspace or interface. Welcome back everyone. I hope everything is going alright. Today, we will see how to preference and customize the workspace or interface. I have shown you many things about preferences. Today we will see the second part of these preferences. So this is our Photoshop workspace or interface. Here we have so many tools and also we have a history panel. I'm going to create a new file. You can press Ctrl plus N or you can also create a file from here. So this is our new file. We have so many options above here. Color, swatches, gradients, patterns. Now I want to drag these tabs on my interface. I'm clicking on the left button and dragging this tab here. It will make it easier for you to work. Sometimes we can think, I want this particular tab to work. That time you can just drag that tab on your interface and do your work very easily. Professional people work like this. Now I will drag this pattern tab here. Then gradients. Then we have properties. I can also close these tabs like this. Now we can think, how can we bring these tabs back to their positions? Not to worry, it is very easy to do. Just go to the window tab. Then from the workspace, choose reset essentials. Now see, they went back to their, back to their earlier position. So, today's total class is over workspace or interface. You can find the workspace on the window tab. And in the workspace, we have essentials. Then we have here, 3D, graphic and web, motion, painting, and photography. You can pick any of them you want. And the toolbars will come accordingly. Photoshop sets everything like this. For the photography section, we have a particular interface. Then we have a particular interface for the 3D section. 
This is how Photoshop arranged its sections. Now, I will show you these options. I have clicked on the 3D option. You can see, it is the 3D interface. So, this is the 3D interface. Then we have the graphics and the web. This is the graphic and web interface. If you want to work with the graphic and web, you have to come to this interface. On the right side, we have different options. You have to work with this. And on the left side, we have our tools. We have all the tools on this toolbar and the updated version. Now see, I can drag this toolbar on this side. You can drag this toolbar anywhere to work easily. On by default, this toolbar always stays on the left side. But yeah, I can drag it on the right side also. Like this, I will again drag this on the left side. You can just set it anywhere and work with this. Then on the workspace option, the main option is essential. It is by default essentials. So this was our workspace or interface. I have already shown you our preferences. I will show you more in this class. If you know how to bring the preference tab, I will press the shortcut and bring this preference tab. This is our preference tab. See below. Here we have an option. Reset all warning dialogs. dialogs. By this, we can reset the warning dialogs. So, I have clicked on this. See, this tab has opened. It is demanding permission to reset. I have pressed OK. Warning dialogs have reset. Then we have here, Reset preferences on quit. When I click on this option, this tab will open. I have pressed OK. Now, every preference option is reset. I hope you have understood how to change the interface, how to move options from here to there, then workspace options, about preferences. If you have any confusion, ask me freely. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I am also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. Hi there. In this basic part, I'm going to show you the interesting buildings wall masking. That how to navigate Photoshop with masking. End of this part, you will able to change wall from any building or something like this type of thing. It's so much interesting to make the navigation with some of your zero Photoshop skills, which we will cover in this basic part. I'm so much excited to share with you this knowledge about the masking. So, don't waste much of your time and let's get started. Hi there. So in this basic part, I'm going to show you the curly hair masking. That how to change the background from an image Photoshop with masking. End of this part. You will able to change background from any subject to an image or something like this type of thing. It's so much interesting to masking the curly hair with some of your zero Photoshop skills, which we will cover in this course. I'm so much excited to share with you this knowledge about the hair or curve image masking. So don't waste much of your time and let's get started. Introduction to Photoshop Tools Photoshop tools are powerful. We can do so much if we understand the tools in Adobe Photoshop. And in this class, I'll help you to get started by breaking down the most common tools in Photoshop and explain in detail what they do. So, as we have seen in the last class, first, go to the interface then click on create new click on create now we will see the tools so the first tool we are going to be looking at today is move tool the move tool just allows you to move the elements around your template you can just click on an element and move it around and our next tool we are going to be looking at is marquee tool what the marquee tool allows you to do is to make a selection area by just clicking and dragging. You can also change the color of the area. 
The next tool is lasso tool. And the lasso tool works similarly to the marquee tool in that. It allows you to make selection within your template. And also, these tools have several options to choose from. The next tool on your list is the crop tool. And everybody knows what it means to crop, right? If you want to change any of your image area, you can just crop it. This is the frame tool, which creates a placeholder for your images. The next tool is the eyedropper tool. And with this, I can just pick a color from any area. The next on our list is spot healing brush. And what it does is, heals a spot in your image. The next is, brush tool it just works like a physical paint brush you can just pick a color and start painting and the next history brush tool can just restore the same parts of your image that you have erased erase tool i guess everybody knows what it does the next gradient tool it can blend colors the next tool on our list is blur tool you can just blur an unwanted area of your image by this tool. This is a dodge tool. And what dodging does, it makes an area of your image lighter. Next on our list, we have a paint tool. You can use it like a physical pen. You can use it to draw or write. Next, we have our type tool. And everyone knows what a type tool does, right? You can type in many forms. Next is the path selection tool. By this, you can select a whole path. Rectangle tool draws rectangles. Next, we will look at hand tool. With it, you can move around your image. Next is zoom tool. And what that does is zoom in and zoom out of your image. This is swatches. You can pick any color from this box. So yeah, that's all for today. I hope you guys are enjoying these classes. Please give me feedback. Thank you. Introduction to History Panel Welcome everyone. In today's class, we will talk about the history panel. So this is our background. By clicking on this, we can add several layers. Like this is the layer number 1. Then again, click on this. See, I have added another layer here. So this is our history panel. How can you get this? Go to the Windows tab and click on History. Click on close to close this section. Then again, click on history. You will get the history panel again. Now click one by one on the history panel. You can see those layers have gone. And click again one by one and you can get them back again. You can also hold them and grab them to the delete tab to delete this. You can see here on the history panel that you have deleted the layer. Now I'm going to draw something. As we can see, the history panel is showing a draw tool. And now if I click on this rectangle tool and draw a rectangle, it will also show on the history panel. Again, if I click on the move tool and try to move something, we can see it is showing move. And now if I click on new from history panel, all things will vanish. And if you click on move all things, will appear again. Thanks for watching. I hope you all find this video helpful. Layers. How to use layers? Hey beautiful souls, I hope you are doing very well. Today, 
we are going to learn how to use layers. Basically, layer is the most important part of Photoshop. We need to use layers in every single work in Photoshop. Layer actually means level. Everything has many layers, like trees roots grow under the mud over that mud layer. There is another layer, then comes the body of the tree. So, in Photoshop, when we will do this works, like we will create a shape. That shape is a layer, then under the shape, there will be another layer. The more shape I will create, the more layers will create. So now, let's see. This is our artboard. First, there is a background. This background is a layer. Now, I am going to draw something. Hi, I didn't draw it over a layer. I have drawn it over the background, so I can't change it. It's not moving, because it was written in the background. We have seen in the last class, if you click on new, all things will vanish. Now, click on this, create new layer. Then a new layer will be created. You can also use a shortcut here, which is Ctrl plus Shift plus N. Now, I will work over this layer. See, I have selected this layer. I am going to draw the right mark. So, see I have worked on layer 1, not on the background. Now, if I move it with the move tool. See, it is moving, right? If I select the background and try to move it, it will not move. I have added a new layer, layer number 2. I am going to pick the brush tool and select the red color. I am putting a cross mark over the right mark. You can see, the right mark is on layer 1 and the cross mark is on layer 2. These two are in two different layers. I have picked the selection tool and selected these two. I can now move them together. Because the auto select button was on. Now see, layer 2 is selected. That's why it is moving. But the black one is not moving. Now, if I select layer 1, then I can move the right mark, not the cross mark. So, this is how layers work. The layer you have worked with, you can move only that specific work. The more details about the layer will be shown in the next class. To use layers, I usually use shortcuts, which is Ctrl plus Shift plus N. If you press this tree, a layer will create. And if you press on Ctrl plus N, then a new document will create. And if you press on Ctrl plus Shift plus N, then there will be added a new layer. And over the layer, you can create shapes or anything and work like that. Every single work will be done on layer. Photoshop depends on the layer. You have to understand about the layer, that it is nothing but levels. After selecting a layer and drawing, or creating shapes over that layer. We can move only that shape or text or anything. We can't move the other things. You can use the auto select option to move other things together. But doing work manually, you have to turn off the auto select option. So that's how the layer works. I hope you have understood everything properly. If not, then ask me freely. Send me direct message. See you in the next class. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. Basic Navigation and How to Move Images and Layers Hey there! In this class, we are going to learn the basic navigation and how to move images and layers. First of all, I'm selecting some of my pictures. Keep this section in all formats. Now, click on Open. As you can see, this is the background. Then layer 1, layer 2, layer 3. Now, if I drag this layer 1 over my background, you can see, I can move this layer. Now, click on the Edit tab, then click on the Free Transform. Now, 
you can decrease the size of this layer. I'm just doing it and I'm fitting it on my background like this. Again, drag this layer 2 over the background. Now, I'm again decreasing the size of this layer 2 and fit it in the background. Same for the layer 3. You can change the size of the background also. So these are the three layers over the background. If you click on this eye mark, the background or any layer will be gone. Now if I select another image from my file, it will be another layer over the background. Click on the right mark. It will change in other layers. Click on auto select. As you can see, I can move this layer now and drag this layer over these layers. This new layer will come over this old layer. Now, drag this layer over here and click on this eye marks beside these layers 1, 2, 3. Again, Drag these layers beside this new layer. So, that's all for today. See you in the next class. Exercise class to move images and layer shapes. Hi everyone, this is our exercise class. You can do practice to move images and layers. By following the last class, you can also download this exercise file and apply on your task and don't forget to post it on our Facebook group. How to depict select images and convert into high quality photos? Hi there, I hope you are doing very well. In today's class, we are going to know how to depixelate images and convert low quality images into high quality images. So let's get started. First, I'm going to open a picture from my file on this Adobe Photoshop. See this picture. The resolution of this picture is very bad. Now. Zoom in the picture, you guys can see the pixels, how bad the resolution is. Why is it? Mainly because of the size and low resolution. So I'm going to increase the resolution and convert it into a high quality image. To get the image size, press on Ctrl plus ALT plus I. You will get the image size. If you can't remember this shortcut, you have to go to the image tab. See in the middle, you will get the image size option. I am using the shortcut here. See here, we have height, width, resolution and in which mode it is. Everything is given here. Now, I am going to change the size of this image. First of all, change the height and width from inches to pixels. See here, the resolution is very low. 7 to 2. I am going to make the resolution 300 pixels per inch. The more you will increase the resolution, the more the size of the picture will increase and will increase the quality also. The height and weight pixels will remain the same because it is on custom size. On this to fit option, select this custom size because you are doing it manually. Now I have zoomed it in. Can you see any pixels here? No, the quality has also improved. The picture is totally clear now. So, do you get it? First you have to go to the image size. Then you have to just increase the resolution. Now, I have opened another picture. A royal bengal tiger is here. 
and will eat you soon. <laughs> okay, I have zoomed in. See, the picture got shattered. The quality is also not good. Again, I will change the image size. I have pressed on Ctrl plus Alt plus I. I have zoomed in the eye. Making the resolution 300 pixels per inch. As you can see, the picture is now clearer and looking like a high quality picture. I have zoomed in. See, there are no pixels or anything. Only because I have increased the resolution. Now, I will do it again in this picture. I am zooming in on the eyes. You can see pixels here. I am going to open the image size tab again. I am increasing the resolution to 300. Now see, I am zooming in again. You can see, there are no pixels here. The picture is very much clear. So, if you want to convert an image into a high quality image, you have to just follow the steps. If you have any questions, please ask freely. I really hope you found this course valuable. But either way, please leave a review and share your experience. How to copy from one image to another? Welcome everyone. How are you all doing? In this class, I'll show you how to copy from one image to another. First, I'm going to open two pictures from my file. So these are the two pictures. Now, click on the rectangular marquee tool. Select a specific area that you want. Click on the move tool. As you can see, I can move this part of this image. You can also crop images with these tools to select the whole image. And with this elliptical marquee tool, you can select a round area. Now, I'm selecting this moon area. I'll copy this area and I'm going to fix it on this image. Click on the move tool. Now I can move this moon. I'm fixing this moon on this camera lens. Click on the right mark to save your changes. Now I'm again selecting this area and going to fix it on this camera lens. So. This is how you can copy from one image to another. So, do practice this class at your home. That's all for today. Bye bye. How to mask background to subject? Hey there, I hope you all are doing very well. Now, let's see how to mask the background of the subject. I'm going to open two pictures from my file. Now, click on this object selection tool and select the strawberry area. Now, click on select and mask. 
Increase the transparency. Now you can change the background. Click on this wall. Here, you can change the background color. You can also change this contrast, shift edges and smoothness. Click on output settings and give the right mark on decontaminated colors. Now go to the second picture. Click on the select tab. From the select tab, click on the subject. You can see, it has selected only these shoes. Now, click on the quick selection tool. Zoom in the picture and you can see the selection was wrong in some areas. Select the right area. Select the details. You can also undo the quick selection. Select the brush tool and pick a color. You can increase the brush size. This is the brush settings. If you increase the spacing, you can remove big areas. And if you decrease the spacing, you can remove small sharp areas. Now, I will do this on another image.
So this is how you can mask the background. So let's finish today's class. Thank you. Exercise class. Mask background to subject. Hello everyone. I think now you can do this masking background to the subject. Follow the instructions from the last class. And you can download this free exercise class and apply on your task. And also upload it on our Facebook group. How to adjust masking with shadow. Hey beautiful souls, I hope you are doing very well. So let's get started with our class. In today's class, I'm going to show you how to adjust masking with shadow. First of all, I'm going to open a picture on my Adobe Photoshop. Click on the object section tool and select this leaf as you have seen in the last class. Then click on Select and Mask. I'm increasing the feather and giving a right mark on decontaminate colors. So this is our background. Now we will change the background color. Click on the solid color. Add a layer. From swatches. I will change the background color. I am going to pick a light orange color and click on layer 1. The background color is changed. Now click on the background copy. You will get a tab like this. Now give a right mark on drop shadow and apply drop shadow effect. Now I am going to increase opacity and change this distance, spread and size. I will again change the color of the background. I have picked a mint color. Now it looks good and natural. That's gonna be it for today. Bye bye everyone. Exercise class Text Masking Hey everyone, please do practice this text masking. You can get this exercise file on our website. Follow the steps and you can do it easily. And don't forget to post it on our Facebook group. How to put text inside a subject with masking. Hello guys, what's up? This class going to be on how to put text inside a subject with masking. So let's start. First of all, I'm going to create a file. Here we have height and width. I can change them. So I picked pixel here. Okay. Let's create. So now I have to take text. So I'm going to take text from the text option. And I will also give the name text. Bring it on the middle. See, we have two layers here. One is background, another is text. Now, what I'm going to do? I will bring another picture here so that I can mask that picture with this text. So, I'm going to pick a picture. I will open this picture on a new tab. Now, hold this picture. Hold, 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 then drag and release. 
See, here the picture is over the text. Then go to the layer option. And click on create clipping mask. As you can see, the text and the picture are mixed now. Here, on this character option, you can choose any font for your text. Just be sure that the picture has to be seen into the text. Now, if I drag this text layer under the picture layer, you will see the difference. It is back to its previous position. So now, I will show you how you can do this clipping masking easily with the shortcut. So keep the mouse on the picture layer and press on ALT button and you will see an arrow mark. When you will see this mark, you have to press again on ALT button. This is the end of our class. I hope you are practicing these classes with me. That's how you will learn faster. See you on the next class. How to layer mask with another background. Welcome everyone. I hope you are doing very good. We will learn today how to layer mask with another background. So let's start our class. Firstly, I am going to collect a picture from the Chrome website. Here is a site called Pixels. Here you can have to search free background. We have so many beautiful pictures here. So I am going to pick this one. You will get this high resolution pictures for totally free. I am going to download this picture. Now, I will open a picture from my file. So this is the picture. This curly hair girl is the subject here. By the way, I love curly hair. So I picked this picture. <laughs> so, now I'm going to get my quick selection tool. So, I'm going to drag this tool and select this girl. You can see, I have messed up this part. I will show you how to fix this. So, here you have to go to the path mode from paint mode. Then I am selecting this part. I am changing the color and decreasing the size so that you can see clearly. Now, I am just holding the paint tool and selecting these areas. With this paint tool, you can select these sensitive parts very easily. And one thing you have to remember is that your hand has to be stable when doing this works. Now, right click and you will get this option. Choose Make Selection. 
then I have been added to selection. Pressed OK. So, I have selected from add to selection. So, this girl has curly hair, which is not possible to select with the selection tool. So, right click and press on select and mask. See, the picture is now black and white, but the details of the hair are not clear. So, what am I going to do? I will pick the brush tool and drag on this area. The hair details are now getting clear. Go back to our picture. Now, I'm going to erase this parts. On the right side, we have so many templates here. You can choose any one. Again, I will click on the select and mask. We have a bunch of hair left here. So, I'm going to fix this. Just keep clicking with this brush tool. The hairs are now showing. You can also increase and decrease these options here. Now see, right above the background layer, there are two layers added. So our masking is done. Now. The picture I have downloaded will open in a new tab. Here, I have removed the background. So I'm going to make this new picture as the background of the girl's picture. So this is the picture. So hold this girl and take her to a new place. <laughs> See, the girl is set with the new background. Now we can change this picture as we want. Now, we want to mix these two pictures so that it looks natural. You can increase and decrease the size of this picture by holding the Ctrl plus D keys. So, this is how you can select one subject and set it in another picture. Please give me feedback on my course by writing a review. Stay tuned. Goodbye. Exercise class mask with another background. Welcome back to our class. Here you can find this exercise files. So this is the picture. Download this picture from the exercise file and you have to just follow the steps. You have learned how to mask layer masks with another background. So do that masking with this picture with another background and don't forget to post it on our Facebook group. Or you can post the screenshot of your task on Q&A. Goodbye. See you in the next class. How to make masking like manipulation edit. Hey everyone, what's up? Today we are going to learn how to make masking like manipulation edit. Let's jump into the class. As always, I'm going to open two pictures from my files. So, these are the two pictures. So, how can we edit like manipulation? Let's see. So, first of all, I'm going to select this cute baby. I think everyone knows how to select any object. So, I'm selecting this whole area. You have to zoom in to select perfectly because it is pretty difficult to select any object perfectly with a quick selection tool.
you have to select these edges carefully. So, you have to just right click and choose select and mask. Then just pick the brush tool and erase the unwanted part. Then I picked another brush and mask this sensitive area. You have already seen how to do this. You have to just press on the ALT button and drag. These selections will be removed. So I click this. And the masking is done. Now I'm holding this baby and drag, drag and release on this picture. I have pressed on Ctrl plus P and set this baby with this picture. Now I have copied the background and transferred it with the first layer. Here we have so many filters. I have selected the lighten effect. Can you see the difference? But these parts are not so smooth. So I'm going to smooth this parts now. I have clicked on the black background and picked a brush and just dragged over these parts. And I have picked the black background as the foreground color. I'm just mixing this baby with this glass ball. So our masking edit like manipulation is done. Doesn't it look easy? I have tried to show you how to do it easily. It was a very simple manipulation edit. On the next class, we will see another amazing manipulation edits. So stay tuned. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I am also available for questions. Send me direct message anytime. How to actively soften skin imperfections? Welcome everyone. I hope everything is going alright. Today, we will see how to actively soften skin perfection. Let's start. So, this is the picture. She has so many spots, freckles and pimples. I'm not saying she is ugly. She is beautiful. We are going to just remove these imperfections from her skin. I have copied this background. I'm going to the filter tab, then clicking on blur and then choosing surface blur. Now you can see a bar and everything is blurred now. So I will just fix these levels as I want. The more you increase this level, the more the picture will blur. So I set the threshold on 74% and radius on 100%. Press on OK. Now it is processing. This process will take time. See, we have copied the background because we are going to use that background as our brush. After doing the mask, we will use it. That's how we can easily remove these imperfections. Be patient. We are almost there. Okay, this is done. On and off the visibility option. You will see the difference. I have made another new layer. I have clicked here. See, it has changed into black color. Now, we will work over this. Now, I picked the brush tool and just clicked on the spot areas. Can you see? The spots are removed. I have decreased the opacity. You can decrease the opacity to make it more natural. But I'm increasing the opacity so that you can see clearly. So I'm removing the spots with the brush tool. Also these areas.
then the forehead. I'm doing it slowly. It is really satisfying for me to do this kind of task. So, I have messed up this nose area. So, I picked the black background as the foreground and used the brush. See, the problem is solved. I am also fixing this neck area. Now, I am going to smooth this lip also. So, I am decreasing the opacity and then just clicking with the brush tool. See, the lip is looking good now, right? This girl is looking very pretty now. You can see the difference by clicking on this visibility option. Our next class is our exercise class. Please keep practicing this task. So stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback. Exercise class act. Activity, soft and skin imperfection. Welcome back to our class. So, I have already given the exercise files for you. You have to just download these files and practice this. 
and after completing these pictures, you have to post it on our Facebook group or you can just take a screenshot and post it. So this is the picture. You have to just remove the scratches on the skin by decreasing the opacity or blurring. If you face any kind of problem, let me know. I'll give you the guidelines. So this section of our course is completed. We will start a new section from the next class. Take care. Stay tuned. How to fix an image using level. Hey guys, what's up? I hope you're all doing very good. We're gonna see today how to fix an image using levels. So let's see. Firstly, I'm going to open a JPG file image on this Photoshop for my work. So this is the image we're going to work with. Of course you can see his face, but you can see his red shoes. Red or orange? I don't know. I think I'm colorblind. <laughs> Come back to our work. So I'm going to change the color leveling here. We're going to see how to increase and decrease the color contrast here. Our main goal is to make this image eye-catching. Like everyone has to see this image even if they don't want to. So this is our adjustment button. If you can't find this button, go to the window tab and click on adjustment. So I have lost. I'll bring it back. You can see that the background is locked. It will remain locked. And this is our leveling option. So from this option, I can decrease the levels. Here you can see the leveling icon is with the layer. So now we're going to start the leveling task. Okay. So, these are points of leveling. So, if I increase and decrease this point, I guess you can see the difference, right? You have to concentrate on the image and do the leveling. And right below the leveling, this is our gradient option. So, I have changed the leveling. You can see the image is looking very good now. For me, this image is now looking better and eye catchy. And with this gradient option, you can fade it and fade out. I think you have seen many Instagram and Facebook models pictures like this. They edit their pictures with this feature. So now you know the secret. <laughs> Here if I increase the leveling further, you can see the image is getting darker, which is not looking good. So I kept it here. Here in RGB, we have three color modes, green, red and blue. You can pick color to transform this image. Now, if you want to see the effect, you have to turn off this visibility. So, do practice this class at home. See you in the next class. How to optional fix the eyedropper tool. Welcome everyone. In today's class, we are going to see how to optionally fix the eyedropper tool. So as always, I am going to open an image from my file. Yeah, so this is the image. What kind of image is this? Do you want to eat that fish? I guess this is a restaurant. Yeah, this is a picture of a restaurant. So now. I'm going to show you how to work with this eyedropper tool and how to optionally fix this on this image. This is our eyedropper tool. Now, if I click on anywhere, it will pick that color. You can see in these little boxes, the colors have changed. Press on X to change the by default color. Look, I have clicked here and the color has changed. So you can click on anywhere and it will pick that color. I can pick any color. Just when I click on the artboard, I can move this anywhere on the artboard and it will pick that color. Now if I pick another tab beside this tab, I can also pick color 
from that tab. Here, I have decreased the size of this tab and opened my Google Chrome tab. So I'm going to take my eyedropper tool. Now, if I pull this tool over here on this G from Google, the color palette will pick the color blue from this, not just the color. It has also picked the code number. You can see the color code. Now, you can just copy the color code and set it anywhere. There was a problem I saw. After bringing an image and selecting a color with the eyedropper tool, you had to then show the color code. But now, you don't have to do that. You can just decrease the size of the tab and open another tab and take the eyedropper tool anywhere. The artboard will pick the color. See, I picked the yellow color from Google, then this beautiful green color. Now, if I search for colors on Google, you can get so many colors from here. So this is the Adobe Photoshop internal library. By searching, you get many things from here. So I have searched color here. You have to wait for a few minutes. Maybe it has come technical problem here. So these are the colors according to my default. Now I will again get my eyedropper tool and select any color from here. And you can also use these pictures internally. See, I have picked the YOLO color from here. You can see the color code here. You can find so many colors, but you can't use all of them. So it is easy for us to use eyedropper tools and pick one color. So here on the foreground, we have the YOLO color. Now, if I want to change any color on my image, I can also do that. First, let me increase the size of this Photoshop tab. You can see these beautiful colors here. Now, I guess now you guys know how to pick colors with the eyedropper tool. So, now I want to change the color of this fish eye. Let's pick the eye color first with the eyedropper tool. Then I'm drawing with the brush tool. I have removed the eye. Then again I have picked a rose color from here and put it on the eye. Then I'm applying the purple color. Maybe you guys are wondering what I'm doing. So I have removed these colors. So that's all for today. I hope you all are clear. You can do this perfectly if you practice this at home. Goodbye. How to change t-shirt color? Hey there, how are you all? I hope you are all doing very well. Let's start our class. Today, we'll see how to change the t-shirt color. I'm going to open a picture with a t-shirt. So, this is our picture. Our background is locked. We will go to the adjustment. We can pick the hue and saturation from here. So if I decrease this, you can see the changes of the color, right? But if you can focus on the picture, you will see that the hair and the body color is also changing with the t-shirt. You can see the before and after look when you are on and off the visibility. Now I will remove the body color. So I have done zoomed in the picture. Now I clicked on the ALT button. After that, I picked the brush and I changed the foreground background. After pressing the X button. Now, I am holding the ALT button and removing this color. It's so satisfying. You have to just erase this. Now, you have to increase and decrease the area. So you can do that by holding on the left and right button. As you can see, I am decreasing the size of this tool. I am also decreasing the hardness and opacity.
So that's how I can do it smoothly. You can see there are some problems. I will fix it. I'm done with the hair. Now I will do the body. I'm just removing this color with the brush tool. You can see I have messed up this area. I'm also fixing this messed up areas. I can again change the color of the t-shirt by increasing and decreasing this hue and saturation. Now you can see only the t-shirt color is changing on and off the visibility. You can see the before and after look. So I have deleted this. Now if I go to the image section and adjust and click on replace color. You can see a shape on the color. After coming in shape, I will work with the eyedropper tool. I have picked the yellow color here on the artboard. And they also picked them on the body shape. Now I will decrease this fuzziness a little bit. I click on this minus eyedropper tool. Then I'm gonna again decrease this fuzziness. Then I can work with this hue, saturation and lightness. If I increase this hue, you can see the difference. So I'm gonna pick this orangey color. So I want to make it green. If I click on this with the plus eyedropper tool, you all can see the color is changed. Now if I click on the color, the whole t-shirt will change into a green color. So it is the benefit of eyedropper tool. If I decrease this hue again, the color will change into pink, red, orange etc. Now if I again pick the pink color, you can see the pink color is again coming from the sides. I'm gonna again add this pink color. You can see the color effect on the body also. So this is the end of our class. See you in the next class. Take good care of yourself. Goodbye. Exercise class. How to change t-shirt color. Welcome back to our exercise class. You have to do this t-shirt color changing on this another picture by following the steps I have shown you in the last class. I have opened a Facebook group already and I have given these pictures on the exercise file. You have to just go through the adjustment to replace the color and change the t-shirt color and upload the picture on the Facebook group. See you in the next class. How to bring out color in Adobe Photoshop. So, let's start our class today. First of all, I'm going to open a picture from this file. You can get this picture from this exercise file. So, this is the picture. Now, I'm gonna change this picture in adjustment with brightness and contrast. If you can find this section, go to the window tab and click on adjustment. This is our brightness and contrast options. Now, if I increase the contrast, you can see the difference. The picture is now looking a little dark. And if I increase or decrease the brightness, you can see the picture is lighter now. If you decrease the brightness too much, the picture will look bad. Click on use legacy option to reset all the changes. Now I'm changing the brightness and contrast again to see the difference. If you turn off and on the visibility, you will see the before and after look. Now if I go to the image tab, here you can see we have three colors. First one is auto tone, then auto contrast and auto color. I have clicked an auto color so you can see the difference. The shortcut key is Ctrl plus Shift plus B. So if you want to see it, go to the history. So I can see here which works have done. And I can also delete them and again add them. This is really fun doing this work for me. You will surely enjoy doing this. So I'm going to work with the adjustment again. I have increased the contrast. 
and decrease the brightness. Now, see the difference. It is looking good, right? Turn on and off the visibility and you will see the before and after look. I think now you are clear about everything I have done. That's the end of the class. Stay healthy. See you in the next class. How to swatch it and save any color? Hey, hello, how are you all? I hope you all are doing fun today. Let's start our class. So, I'm going to create a file. I have created a layer here. I have given the name of the layer, color. To do anything, I have to pick a color. As you have seen on the eyedropper tool class, how can we pick colors from another tab? So, I'm going to do that. So, I picked the yellow color. See, here is an option called Add to Swatches. After clicking on this, see, now we have a creating option. So, I will give a name here. Click on OK. See, the swatch has been created. Now, if I create a layer on my artboard, the color will remain the same because we have that color on our foreground. Now, I want this light green color. So, I will again pick the eyedropper tool and select this color. Go to the artboard. You can see the color is here. Now, I will again create a swatch. I will create another one like this. Same size. See, both are the same color. But when I click on this, then the green color will appear. Now, I am moving this one with pressing on the ALT. I will again create another swatch with this green color. Now we have three swatches. Click on this and color has appeared. So these swatches will remain here permanently. You can keep these swatches here permanently. Now let's see how to apply these colors with the brush tool. I have taken a new layer. I am selecting the colors and applying with my brush tool. See green, light green and yellow. Now, if I go to the history, we can see what we have done. I can delete this, again can draw this. That's how we can create swatches and also we can use these colors later. So that's all for today. Please give me feedback. If you can't understand anything, I'm here for you guys. Take care. Exercise class swatches and save any color. Hey, welcome back to our exercise class. Here, you have to practice how to create swatches and save any color. So, you have to just create a file. And on that file, you have to add different swatches. Then take a screenshot and post it on our Facebook group. Take care. See you guys in the next class.
How to color and adjustment layers. Hey everyone, welcome back to our class. So today, we will learn how we can adjust color and layer. As always, I'll bring a picture from my file. You will get these pictures on this folder. So, this is our picture. An eagle bird sitting on the tree and waiting for you. <laughs> today we'll work on this picture. Now I'm going to click on this image tab. In this adjustment section, we have so many options like brightness and contrast, level, exposure, vibrant, saturation, etc. I will apply them all and show you how to adjust color and layers. Now I'm going to click on this adjustment. If you can find this section, you can go back to the image tab and click on adjustment. These icons are the shortcut. So I came to the vibrance. After that, when I clicked here, a new layer was created. So I have decreased the vibrance here. See the picture. You can see the difference. I have against increased the vibrance. You can see. The color has increased. Now, if I increase the saturation, the color level will increase further. You can see the lips color has changed. It has got more color. On and off the visibility option and you will see how the color changed. Now, I'm going to the adjustment option, then expose option. We are going to increase and decrease these levels. You can see, the brightness is increasing and decreasing. You have to adjust this option as your wish. Now, I will go to the curve option. If I do up and down this curve, you will see some difference. See, the picture got dark and bright and also the color is changing we have three colors here green red and blue see now i picked the green color if i drag this point lower the color is changed into purple color similarly if i pick the blue color and drag the point lower the color will change now go to the color balance you can decrease these levels to balance the color. Next. I'm going to click on this black and white option. See? The picture is now black and white. I have turned on the tint option. I'm decreasing and increasing this level. You can see the picture is changing. So, I will pick another picture. That will be easier for you guys to understand. Now, click on the black and white option. See, it got ash color. Now, I have turned on the tint option. Now, it has an orange color. If I increase and decrease these options, you can see the changes. Now, if I drag this option up and down, the color will keep changing. We have here a photo filter. You can pick any filter. And you can also increase and decrease the opacity option. You can change the color also. Next, I will go to the channel mixer option. See, I'm changing the levels. My picture is changing a little bit. These effects are milled. Not that bold. Next, we have a color lookup. We have so many options here. If I use this option, see the color effect. I 
I have zoomed in the picture so that you all can see easily. You can see the different effects on this picture. We have so many effects here. We have also ready-made colors here. Now, I will go to the invert option. See, I have selected this. Now, I will work with this invert. I have decreased the opacity option. I am drawing with the brush tool. You won't see the changes now. Now if I increase the opacity, then you will see the changes. Here, I am removing the outside area of the bird to set it with the background. I am decreasing the size of the brush so that I can remove the side smoothly. Now, it is looking good. I am decreasing the opacity now. I am mixing this eagle with the background by giving the effects with the brush tool. Turn on and off the visibility to see the difference. This is another effect. Increase and decrease the level and you will see the difference. We have a threshold here. Similarly, drag this right and left. You can see, the picture is now getting totally black and white. If I draw this on this picture, you can see, it got black and white. Next, we have a selection color. Drag these levels and you will see the changes again. Also, you can change the color. Look at the background and bird lips. You will see the changes. I have zoomed in and turn off and on the visibility option. Now you can clearly see the difference. That's how you will adjust these effects and have to see which one is perfect. Now, I have applied the gradient option. The basic gradient options are given here. We can use this by decreasing the opacity. See, we have so many colors here. Now, we will see the layer mask. See, I am increasing and decreasing the opacity. And if I remove this parts, see how it looks. So, that's how you can adjust the colors and layers on a picture. 
I hope you understand everything clearly. If you can't, please ask me. That's the end of our class. See you on the next class. How to customize text size and shadow. Hey everyone, how are you all? Today we are going to learn how to customize text size and shadow. So as always, I will create a file. Now I am picking the text tool and trying to create text. If I drag the option left right, the text will get increased and decreased. Here. We have so many fonts and sizes. I have picked this font. So now, I am clicking on this window tab and clicked on the corrector tab. Here is your corrector tab. Here, you can get all kinds of text based options. And another corrector, we have a paragraph option. Here it is. These two options are based for all kinds of text editing. And these two options are for alignment. Now, I will create a text. I'm working with the default text. I'm decreasing the size as it is oversized. Just click and drag. I will keep it on sharp. If you want to make it on middle alignment, we will pick this one. So, I made it a side alignment. Here, we have black color. We can pick any color. So, here we have red, pink, blue, light blue, green color. I have picked this golden color. From this option, you can change the font style. After clicking on this option, I am just moving my scroll wheel. Actually, I don't like this color. So, I am again changing the color. We have here this text, lorem ipsum. Now, if I want to increase and decrease the character size, what can I do? So, I want to change this character O. So, I have just selected this character and drag this option on the right side. See, it is increasing and this option will change the character style. And you can also change the font style. And we can change the color also. Okay? You can pick the eyedropper tool and select color from swatches. We have already learned how to make swatches. So I have cancelled all the changes. Now I will change the whole text color from my swatches. We have so many swatches here. We have an option here. Legacy swatches. When I will click here. See, we have so many files here. And inside these files, we have so many different swatches. These swatches have different beautiful color combinations. We also have a color guide here. Sometimes we can't pick the right color or we don't know much about colors. So this color guide will help us in this kind of problem. Now you don't have to be creative. The softwares will make you more creative. So I think you all are clear how to pick color from swatches and apply them to text and all kinds of work in the text. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. See you soon. How to use advanced text options. What's up everyone? I hope you are doing very good. We will see today how to use advanced text options. 
Let's start. So, how can we use the advanced text option? We have our character option. We have so many font styles here. So I have picked this font. And I picked the black color. Now, I will pick another text. This is a by default text. Now, we will use the advanced text option. See, this text size is very large. Now, if I pull the text tool and decrease the size, you will see so many sentences here. Now, I can change the color. If I want to learn how to make and use different kinds of fonts, you can check out another course which is only based on the fonts. You can get 4000 plus fonts and all kinds of fonts. So, if you want to learn how to use ready-made text and how to make fonts with illustrators, you are welcome to that course. You will get premium fonts that you have bought. I have given these fonts there. So it's your wish. If you want to enroll on that course, you are welcome. So, I've decreased the size again. With this option, you can increase and decrease. And I'm changing the color. Now, I will open another text file. We have a certificate template here. I'll change this surname or name here. We can just put any name here. So, I'm selecting this. Just press on control and select one by one. Now, I will work with the certificate text. I'm changing the font style. See, the date signature text are also changing at the same time. You see, four different texts have changed at the same time. Why did it happen? Because I selected those texts earlier from this option. Now, I'm changing only this text certificate. So, this is the end of today's class. I really hope you found this course valuable. But either way, please leave a review and share your experience. How to use text align, text verb, custom resizable text. Welcome back to another class. I hope you're all fine. We will see today how to use text align, text verb, custom resizable text. So let's start. We have done work with this template in the last class. We will work again on it. I have changed the font style. We have a text file here. We can work with anyone. This is the verb option. If you can't find this option, you have to go to the type tab and choose the verb option. Here, I will choose the arc option. See, it has changed. Now, if I move this band level, you can see the text is bending upward and downward. Then we have horizontal and vertical distortion here. Increase and decrease these options, and you will see the changes. Then I have chosen the arc upper option. You can see the changes. If I keep it zero, everything will be the same as the previous one. I can select between this vertical mode and horizontal mode options. We have so many options here, and you will see different types of text warp every time and you have to change these levels alongside i will show you again for your better understanding we see this kind of text warp on posters t-shirts etc they use these options to make it eye catchy so i have made this layer raster size type see after selecting this text and clicking on the right button we can see an option here, which is perspective. See, I can now move this text. You have to just click and hold on this anchor points 
and move. See, I'm moving this part and it is going upward. Then choose the skew option. Now, you can move the text like this. Just hold the right button on the anchor points. Now, I will show you the rooted option from here. With this rooted option, you move around the text. If I drag this rooted option here, it will move around like this. You can keep it anywhere and can move the text around. I think you all are clear about this topic. That's all for today. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions and send me a direct message anytime. How to download install process. Welcome back everyone. How are you all? Today we are going to see how to download and install brushes. So, firstly, I am going to open a file. I will give you some brushes on the exercise file. You can get them from downloadable resource files. I am going to click on this window tab. Then choose the brushes option. See, the brush section is opened. From here, we can increase and decrease sharpness and hardness of brush and can select any brush and color mode and use it. So, our background is white and the brush color is in black. We have here hardness and spacing options. And on this brightness option, from here, you can get this option, converted legacy tool presets, clicked on this. I'm dragging this one upward. See, into this file, we have so many folders. You can use any one. I'm going to click on this default tool presets. You can see, we have so many different brushes here. As Photoshop updates regularly, that's why it has these brushes already. So, I'm going to pick a brush. So I have picked this one. I have increased the size and just dragged the brush. Now, now I have increased the spacing. See, the drawing is now full black. Now, if I flatten and move this one, see, it is changing. Now, I will show you how to download brushes. I am going to open my Chrome browser. I am searching on the search bar. Photoshop brush. So, we have so many links here. This website, Brushy Z, has 2500 plus brushes for free download. So, I'm going to open this link. So, this is the website. You can see, Premium is written on some brushes. You have to buy these brushes. And these other brushes are free. You don't have to pay for this. So, I'm going to download this brush, Brush Stroke. I have clicked on this. It is loading. With this free download, you will also get a license for using this brush. So I have clicked on this free download. Now, I will open another website, allfreedownload.com. You can find so many brush collections here. It is also connected to Shutterstock. I think you all are familiar with Shutterstock. It is the world's biggest premium site. You can buy anything from here. And in this website, Shutterstock has given a 10% discount. You can buy brushes from here and use it. So, it is loading. It will take time. Here, you can see so many brushes. I'm scrolling down. You use these brushes as much as you want. So, I'm picking a floral brush. Now, I'm going to download it. It will take 2.37 MB. I have clicked on the start download. Now, it will be downloaded. So, here Shutterstock is giving these brushes free because they want to advertise their premium collections. So, if you want, you can buy from Shutterstock. I am showing you the use of free brushes here. These free brushes are also very beautiful. 
and have quality standards. So I came back to my Photoshop. I'm going to open the brush tab. We have options here. After going to this option, see below, you can find import brushes. Click on that. You will find the brush file here. I will give you all of these files. Here is the brush I've downloaded. Now choose any shape and click with the left button. See these beautiful flowers. And we can increase and decrease the size also. And move this one also. I've changed the color here. Scroll down. Scroll down. You can find so many brushes here. You have to apply everything. That's how you will understand clearly. So I'm just picking these brushes one by one and showing you the different brushes. That's all for today. Keep practicing on your home. I really hope you found this course valuable. But either way, please leave a review and share your experience. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. How to use brush tool? Hey everyone, how is everything going? Today we will learn how to use a brush tool. So let's start today's class. We will just pick these brushes, increase and decrease the size, spacing and hardness, and can use it. So I'm going to pick a brush. And from this brush option, you can increase and decrease the hardness and the brush size. I have decreased the size of the brush. No, I will keep it medium and increase the hardness. You can see the changes below and this spacing option. The more you will increase it, the less you will see the round balls here. And the more you will decrease it, the more you will see the balls here. And if you drag it at the last point, you will see it as a line. See, if I decrease the hardness here, I'm decreasing the size of the brush. See, it is in a thin line here. From here, I will pick the star brush. See, I'm drawing stars here. See, we have so many brushes here. You can use as many as you want. You can use this build up option. Then this angle option here. You can move the brush angle with this. Now, I will pick this leaf brush. I'm also giving it a color. Now I'm going to flip it. Flip X. See, it is flipped now. See carefully. It is looking like a part of her eye. Again, I clicked on the flip Y. I have drawn another two here. Then I clicked on vertical. See, here is a line. You guys will enjoy doing this one. It will work like a mirror. So I'm holding the shift button and decreasing the size. Okay? Now see, if I draw on this side, the same thing will appear on this side also. This one, I'm giving another one. I'm just changing the color and decreasing the size here. I have removed this line. We have so many options here. This one mandala. This is the funniest option here. You all will love it. Here it is, 3. I will make it 5. So, so I'm just keeping the mandala only and deleting the other works. So I will select mandala option. Now I will pick any brush. See? Now if you click and draw any of the sides, the same thing will automatically appear on other sides. Just drag here, it will automatically draw the design. 
I picked another brush. See, I'm doing nothing. Just dragging here. It's a very easy and enjoyable work. See, everything is created automatically. I have used Mandala 5. You can use 3, 4 or anything. If you want to draw this type of round pattern, you can use this brush technique. I think you all have understood everything clearly. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I am also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. How to use Spot Healing Brush Tool Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing very well. Today, we will see how to use Spot Healing Brush Tools to remove spots from an image. So, as usual, I will open a picture from the file. This is the picture. Her eyes are really beautiful, right? You can see, she has some spots on her skin. So, this is our Spot Healing Brush. You can see how it works. I have just dragged the brush here and clicked the left button. First, set these levels, hardness, size and spacing and then start the work. See how easy it is. No one can find out that girl had spots on her skin. You have to just decrease the size and hardness and hold on the left button and work on the skin. See, the spots have gone on the forehead also. See, this is the history. I have used the brush healing tool and you can see the before and after look. I hope you have understood everything. I really hope you found this course valuable. But either way, please leave a review and share your experience. Stay tuned, stay healthy, goodbye. Exercise class, how to use spot healing brush tool. Welcome to our exercise class. I have given you a picture. You can get it from our exercise file. This is the picture. See this picture carefully. It has so many spots and scratches. You have to just remove these spots and scratches by using the spot healing brush as I have shown you. You have to follow the steps one by one. You have to show me the difference. You have to call us two pictures. One picture that you have worked with and another is this old picture. And you have to post it on our Facebook group or on this Q&A section. So stay tuned. Keep practicing. See you in the next class. How to use History Brush Tool Welcome back everyone. I hope everyone is alright. Today, we will learn how to use the History Brush Tool. So as always, I'm going to open an image from files. This is the picture. A picture of orange slices. Do you like eating oranges? So, we are going to work with these oranges today. 
so I picked the brush tool and also pick the red color and just drawing over it also adding the blue color I don't know what I'm doing I have just messed up everything you can see so what am I going to do now how can I fix it see here we have the history brass tool I have picked it and at the same time I have increased the size also I'm just clicking and dragging over it see the color is removed. So, whatever mistakes you will make, you can just use this history brush tool and remove that mistake, like this. Just hold the left button of your mouse and drag. For example, you want to keep the background, then you can only just remove the subject by using this history brush tool. Now, I want to remove this slice of orange. So, I picked the spot healing brush and just increase the size and placed it over the slice now click on my left button see the slice is removed now if i pick the history brush tool again and draw here the slice will come back again i'm just dragging and the slice is coming back so that's how you can do this works easily i hope you have understood everything clearly if not please ask me or you can just send me a direct message I really hope you found this course valuable, but either way, please leave a review and share your experience. Stay tuned, stay healthy, goodbye. How to create shapes Hey everyone, how is everything going? Today we will see. How to create shapes. So let's start. First, I will create a file. I'm going to make it inches, not pixels. I will set the height and width at 8.5 and 5.5 inches. And everything is alright. The background is white, okay? So this is the artboard. Now I will show you. How can I create shapes here? So, no matter how big the shape is, it will never cross this artboard area. And this is the shape tab. If you can't find this tab, just go to the windows tab and choose the shape and you will get so many ready-made shapes here. On this legacy option, you will get many other things. like 2019 shapes, banners, films, etc. So you can get as many things as you want from here. So here leave, trees, wild animals and flowers, you will get them ready made. There is no need to draw these things here. So I picked a rectangle shape and I'm creating it outside the artboard. But see, the shape didn't go outside, it is in the area. Now, I'm changing the color. I picked a sky blue color. Now, I want to create another shape, which is circle shape. So, I'm creating a circle. Some years ago, people had to hold on control plus shift and draw the shapes carefully. But now, it is very easy on Photoshop. You have to just hold on the control button and drag. And the shape is ready. So. I have changed the background color again and also changing the color of this circle. See, new layers are created here. Now, I want to stroke this circle shape. This is the stroke. And I'm increasing the size of the stroke. See, it is like a border of the circle. Now, I'm adding gradients, patterns, and colors on this stroke. You have to just maintain the size and change its colors and design. So now, I will take another circle shape. See, 
I'm taking this ship in a very large ship. I have picked the ash color and I will keep it in the middle and I will place the little shape over the large shape. I'm changing the layer names so that you all can understand clearly. So here I'm fixing this. Now see how this is looking like. It is looking like a logo. Alright. I'm going to change the color again and also dragging this layer a little bit upper. See, now it is looking fabulous. I'm lifting the little circle upper. Now, I'm going to other shapes. See, these are flowers. I want to pick a building now. I'm searching for a building. On the series section, you can find these buildings. You can see the strokes here. So, I've changed the color. Now see, you can now clearly see the buildings now. Now, if I want to decrease the size, I have to adjust it with the frame. You will get it ready man. You have to just adjust the size with the frame. I'm placing it here. And here it is. I'm going to darken the color now. So, how is it looking? Let me know your feedback. That's all for today. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. How to rotate shapes and layers. Welcome back everyone. I hope you're all well. Today we will see how to rotate shapes and layers. So let's start. So I will take a custom artboard. I'm going to keep it on pixels. So this is our artboard. Now I want to create a shape. So from the shapes leaf section. I will take a leaf. I can change the color from here or I can go to the layer and change the color. So I have made it black. Now how can I rotate this leaf? Just press Ctrl plus T. Now see, if I drag this point, this leaf will also move and if I unmark this option, this point will go away. So if I place this point on the middle of this leaf, See, I'm moving it around and with this warp option, I can move this leaf like this and you can move it. It is an easy way but if you want to move it in other ways, then you have to do it like this. Like see, I placed this point here. I'm rotating it like this. See how easy it is. I've copied this layer. Now, I have placed this point here and I am rotating another leaf like this. So, I want to rotate it from here, like this. It is looking so beautiful, right? So I think you all have understood how to use the rotate tool and how to rotate a shape. Thanks for watching. Please let me know if you have any confusion. I really hope you found this course valuable. But either way, please leave a review and share your experience. Take good care of yourself. Goodbye. How to manipulate layers. Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing well. Today we will learn how can we manipulate layers and shapes. This is our artboard. Now. I want to draw a shape, so I'm going to pick the shape tool and draw a square shape. But see, the corners of the shape are rounded. Now, if I increase and decrease these levels here, the corner sizes will increase like this. I'm going to make it black so that you can clearly see. So I have removed all the changes.
So, how can I manipulate this layer? So, I have brought this picture. After bringing, I want to do a clipping mask with this picture. I have shown you clipping masking earlier. If you can recall that, you will see an arrow mark, then left click. With holding the ALT button, and the clipping mask will be done. So, I have selected these two layers now. I am clicking on this. Convert to smart object. Now see, we can move it easily. So, manipulate means, we can change it in many ways. I am going to work with the drop shadow. See, I am increasing my opacity, distance and size. See. Now it is looking good. The drop shadow can be clearly seen now. So, this is the benefit of drop shadow. So, I have cut this. I have made this layer a rasterized layer. Now, I can change it in many ways. Like this perspective option. See, now you can move this image like this. I have shown you this feature with text. Same you can do it with layers. See, how can I move it with just dragging like this? One side is small and another side is bigger. Can you see? With this free transform option, I can transform freely. See, this is the 2 divide option. And this is the 4 divide option. Now see, if I drag this part with my mouse, I can move some specific part of a picture. It is looking funny actually. It is more like warping. I brought another one. See? I'm changing this part, but the other part is not moving. With perspective, you can move it left and right. Now, I've clicked on distort. Now see, I can decrease and increase the length. And also, we can curve it. Just click on the right button and you will get many other options. You can check them when you practice it. See, it is looking like someone put a mobile on somewhere. Now, I want to open a picture of a mobile. This is the picture. So, I have dragged it here over this picture. I will now decrease the size with pressing on the Ctrl plus T button. You can also rotate this. You have to just fit it with the other picture. After pressing on Ctrl plus T, I am rotating this picture. Now, I have pressed on Shift plus Ctrl and see, it is curving. And I am going to fix it on the mobile screen. When you will up and down the picture, just hold the Ctrl button. I am just showing you how to do it. Now, I am going to perfectly fix this picture with the mobile. See, the finger part, it is messed up. I will fix it now. I have created another layer and selected the mask option. And I have picked the brush tool. See, I am removing this part. And fixing this image also. I am just decreasing and increasing the size and doing it.
like this. I'm erasing it. Now see, it is perfect. I have shown you how to manipulate a layer step by step. I hope you have understood it clearly. Thank you for watching. Do practice it at home. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to use pen tool? What's up everyone? How is everything going? Today we will learn how to use a pen tool. So let's go. This is our artboard. We are going to select the pen tool. Before drawing, I am going to select a color. So I will work in shape mode. See carefully. I first clicked here. Then I'm dragging. Click and drag, click and drag. I want to draw a leaf. See, it's a leaf. Middle of this leaf, I will give a link like this. Click and drag. I'm going to make one side a bit darker. You have to just join one point with another point by adjusting it. I'm drawing another shape here. I'm just clicking and dragging. You have to press ALT button when doing this work. Like this. You have to press ALT to move these handles. Now, I'm going to draw the body of the leaf now. I'm drawing a little leaf here. So, I have made it green. And this side is a bit darker. Whole body of the leaf is green now. One thing you have to remember is, you have to set your hand with the pen tool. Pen tool is the most important tool here in Photoshop because Photoshop and Illustrator means pen tool. The whole work depends on the pen tool. So, this is how you have to first make it on shape mode or path mode and work with the pen tool. I hope you have understood it clearly. Let me know. If you have any kind of confusion, I really hope you found this course valuable. But either way, please leave a review and share your experience. Take good care of yourself. Goodbye. How to design an Android icon? Welcome everyone. I hope you all are doing well. Today we will learn how can we design an Android icon. As always, I will create a file. 
I'm going to pick the circle tool. I will draw a circle here. I have made it black. Now, I'm going to pick a text from here. I just want the L. So, I have removed the other part. I'm changing the font style. So, I want this font. I'm going to change the color of the circle. So, I picked the sky blue color. So, I'm going to drag this L here and set it into a circle. Like this. Now, I'm going to change the color of this L. So, I have picked the white color from here. So now, I have added drop shadow on this. See how it looks now. You have to customize this drop shadow as how you want. See, now it is looking good, right? I'm making this color a little bit darker. I have selected this layer. I want to make it into a smart object. So, right click and choose to convert to a smart object. When I will double click on this, it will be a smart object. But I will show you it a bit later. Now say, I am making a copy of this and decreasing the size also. To copy. You have to just press on ALT and drag. See, this is the big one, then the middle one, then small one. I have selected all this and press on the Allen option. See, all these objects are in the line now. So, I have double clicked on this layer and say this object is now here and say this, I can now change the color of the circle, I can also change the color of this L or can change the font style also. So I have made it small t and I have made it middle alignment. See magic. The blue L is now pink T. All changes I have made there is now showing here. To save the changes, just press on Ctrl plus S. So, I have made another smart object. Select it. I want to also add E here. As I want to make an icon, I am going to open the text option. I'm decreasing the size of this T to join it with the E. Now, they're joined with. I'm going to change the background color again. I want to make a perfect icon. I have pressed on Ctrl plus S to save the changes. See, it is here now. So. This is how we can design Android icons professionally. If you have any confusion, you are free to ask questions or just post on our Facebook group. We will surely help you out. That's all for today. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. How to use frame tool? Hey everyone, I hope you are all doing very good. Today we will learn how to use frame tools. 
So let's start. So firstly, I'm going to create a file. I've picked my custom artboard. These are the frame tools. One is square, another is circle, and the other one is rectangle. These three are the frame tools. We will see how can we use them in a perfect way. So I'm creating a rectangle frame. See, the frame has been created on the layer automatically. After increasing the size, the frame is created. Now, I have copied this frame. Like this. Just press and hold the left button and drag. Now, I want to draw a circle frame. So, I picked the circle frame and I'm drawing the circle frame like this. Circle frame is done. See how easy it is. Then I want to bring three pictures here. To set them into these frames. So, from here, I'm selecting these four pictures and opening them. These are the pictures. Now, I'm holding this picture and dragging it here to set it into the frame. See, it acts like a smart object along with the frame. It has got into the frame. I'm resizing it. Fixing it perfectly. So, this is how frame tools work. For this reason, we use frame tools. Setting is done. Now, I want to take this picture. So, I'm dragging this picture here. So, it has gotten into this frame. But I don't think it is looking good here. I think it will look good with the circle frame. Let's see. Yeah, now it is looking perfect. I'm fixing the size. Cool. Now I'm going to take this picture. I'm going to resize this picture. So, I'm clicking on going to. Resize is done. This picture has got into the frame. I'm decreasing the size, okay? Now, I want this picture as my background. See the layers carefully. This picture is only the background. This is the first layer. I've decreased the opacity. Now, I want to make it black. See? Now how it is looking. Again, I'm decreasing the opacity. Because, I don't want to make it bold. Now, I want to make strokes for these pictures. So, for the circle one. The stroke is done. Round stroke. Now, I'm going for this one. I'm increasing the stroke size for this one. Here, this is the stroke. And for this one, I will do the same. So, these three strokes are done. Now, I want to customize the colors. How can I do this? So, I have picked the brush tool. I'm going to just apply some black spots on the background. Oh yeah, I have decreased the hardness. Now, I'm going to pick the sky blue color to create an effect here. 
Let's see how it will look. I'm applying it, but it is not working here. I think I should first create a layer over here and do this effect over the layer. It would be great I think. I have created a layer. Now I'm applying this color. Yeah, now it is working. Great, it's done. Now it is looking beautiful. Now I have picked the text tool. Made a box here. I want to keep some text here. You can add text here that you want to add. If you want to work with these frames, you can do like this. See, the text is here. I'm changing the font style. You can change this as you want. I'm adding the align also. I'm going to bring one copy here. I've made the alignment for it like this. Right sided. That's it. I hope you have understood everything perfectly. If no, then please send me a direct message. Me or my team will surely help you out. Again, thank you for watching. Goodbye. How to explain smart objects? Welcome back everyone. How is everything going? In this class, I will explain to you what a smart object is and how it works. So, I am going to create a file now. I will bring a picture here on which I will show you how the smart object works. So, I am opening a file. You will get this on your exercise file. It's not opening. Now it will open directly from here. See? Now, I am dragging it here on my artboard. Now, I will resize this picture. After clicking on Ctrl plus T, I have decreased the size. I can decrease the size further. Now, I am moving it here and there. And if I increase the size again, you can see, the picture is blurred and the quality got damaged. See? See the difference? This picture is totally clear. And this picture is totally damaged. You can see the difference clearly. So, to keep the picture in good quality, we use smart objects. So, I have made this picture a smart object. Now, I am again doing the resize. I am decreasing the size. And again, I am moving it here and there. Now you will see the magic. I'm increasing the size. See, the picture is totally clear and in good quality. There is no blurring or anything. So, if you want to keep your picture clear and in good condition, you have to use the smart object. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. Exercise class explains smart objects. Welcome back to our exercise class. You have to practice this task with this picture. You don't have to post it on Facebook or anything. I have given you this picture on your exercise file. You have to download it and just follow the steps I have shown you in the last class. You have to realize this picture with making it a smart object and see the difference. After finishing this exercise class, come to our next class. See you in the next class. How to design any icon? Hey everyone, how is everything going? So, we will see today how to design any icon. So, let's go. This is our artboard. Now, I will show you how to make any icon or how to change the color of the icon 
with the help of a smart object. From this layer smart object file, I have found this Photoshop icon. Now, I am dragging it to my artboard. So, this is our icon. I can now make it a smart object. After resizing, I will make it a smart object. I have increased the size. So, I am clicking on convert to smart object. So done. I will make some copies of the icon now. On this copied icons, the same ingredients are going from the real one. Now, I will change the name of these layers. Layer 1 Layer 2 and Layer 3 I am again fixing the sizes. You have to just press on Ctrl plus T and just resize these icons easily. Now, I have selected these layers and given an alignment on them. Now see, they are in the serial, from small to big. So now, I have copied layer 1 and dragged it over here. I am giving a name, which is layer 4. I am making another copy. No, I don't want it. Now, I am double clicking over this smart object and also changing the color. The color has changed now. I can now either delete this or keep it. Anyway, now I will click on Ctrl plus S and save it. And I will go to the earlier tab. See, all of these icon colors have changed. Because these all are copied. Now, I will select layer 1 and choose new smart object via copy. I am going to change the name again to layer 4. I will again copy this layer 4. This is another copy. I will again change the color. I have given it in the same color. As earlier and after clicking on Ctrl plus S I'm going to my earlier tab you can see only this icons color has changed because I've made it a smart object separately that's why the color changed this way I hope you have understood if you have any confusion you can ask me freely I really hope you found this course valuable but either way Please leave a review and share your experience. Cropping How to crop any image? Hello everyone, how's everything going? Today, we will see how to crop any image. Let's start. So this is the picture. So I'm picking the crop tool to show you how to crop an image. You can also get the ready-made cropping option from here. You can get the ratios here. See below. Choose this option. Then you can see the original ratio. This is the 4 or 5 inch size. Then we have this one. Then square size. You can choose any size to crop the image. By dragging like this, I can extend the image also. We have the background here. When you click here, the background will be unlocked and will create another layer. So, I don't want it. I'm just showing you how to do it. If I go out the ratio, then I'm going to use the customized ratio. Using a customized ratio is better. The ratio doesn't have to be always in the specific size. So, I'm unselecting this part. See, I'm just cropping the part I want. So that's how we can customize like this with the crop tool. I have unlocked the background. Now, I'm pulling the right side of the image with the crop tool. Maybe you will see the difference. I'm showing you an option here. This image doesn't have anything on this size. That's why you can find out the difference. But if you want to add some more parts on your image, 
you can use this option. I have cropped the image more. You can crop it easily. Just press Ctrl or just give the right mark. So I'm increasing the extension. Now I want to increase the image size. How can I do that? Now I have to turn on the content error option. Then give the right mark or press enter. Now see, it is processing. Then you will see, many other parts of the image will appear here on this blank part. No one will find out the changes here I have made. See, another part has been added here. Photoshop can extend the images with the robotic system. I'm doing the same with the upper part. Processing is going on. See the difference? This is how we will do this work. If you want to increase any part of an image, we have to just crop the image and extend the parts. Now see, I have unmarked the content hour option. Now it is not working. Again, I have marked the option and selected the part. Now you will see, it will start to do pressing. So, only if you turn on the content error option, you can do the extension work. Otherwise, see the sky. Many parts have added. We have many other options here. I will show you these options now. I am going to crop tools. See, we have here this one perspective tool. Slice tool. Then slices selected tool. We can choose any of them and work with. So I will show you a little bit more. I'll show you now how the perspective tool works. You can cut square shapes with other crop tools. But with this perspective crop tool, you can cut a specific part you want. See, I have first selected the tool, then dragged an added point here. Then I'm dragging it up and adding another point here. But see, the whole B is not coming into my crop tool. I will try to set it. So I'm doing it again. First of all, I have clicked here. Then again clicked below. I'm just selecting this area. I'm just selecting this area I want. Selection done. Just press enter or give the right mark. Your work will be done. So, you don't have to do anything here. Just you have to select the area you want, nothing else. The cropping is done. See? So this is how you can use the crop tool. I hope everything is clear to you now. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay tuned, stay healthy. Exercise class crop image. Welcome back to our exercise class. I've given you some images in the exercise file for you. You have to just download it and show us how to crop it. You have to show us can you do the extended part. Then can you turn on the content error option and increase the size. And how can you do the cropping? Just practice it. You have to just see, can you do it or not? The content error option is very important. So practice it as much as you can. See you in the next class. Stay tuned. How to straighten the horizon line? Welcome back to our class. I hope you are doing very well. In today's class, we will see how to straighten the horizon line. So let's go. First of all, I am going to open some pictures from my file. I have opened three pictures. See, the pictures are in curved positions. 
in a wrong position. I'm picking these pictures together in one tab. So you can see these pictures. They are not in a straight position. Now we will see how we can crop it straightly with the help of straightening the horizon line. So I'm dragging them to their previous places. Done. I have picked the crop tool. This is the straighten the horizon line option. Now click and drag. Drag as you want. The Photoshop will accept it. Now see, the picture is now straight. It was curved earlier. Now this one. Same task. Select it then just click and drag. Done. Save it. Same with this picture. We have just selected the tool and clicked and dragged. Done. So this is how we can straightly crop a picture using the straighten horizon line tool. I hope you have understood clearly. I really hope you found this course valuable. But either way, please leave a review and share your experience. Take good care of yourself. Goodbye. Layer Styles How to install Layer Styles Hey everyone, I hope you all are doing well. In today's class, we will see how to install Layer Styles. I am going to first create an artboard. This is our artboard. Now, I have to first go to the window. From here, I will choose Styles. See, this tab has opened. We have here basic natural and fabric ADC. You can get all these sections from here. See, this natural section has so many effects here. Now, I'm going to pick the text tool and write a sentence on this artboard. I have increased the size, so I have written Photoshop. I'm adding color now. I have selected the color black. Now I can apply this effect on this text. These tiles are called layer tiles. So, see, I have clicked on this effect and the effect has added. Everything is ready made here. I am just clicking on them. See the red one, then the white one. This is how you can easily apply layer tiles. And from this option, choose legacy tiles and mode. After clicking on this, you will get two folders and on these folders, we have gel, glass, grunge, metallic and chrome these options. Just select one by one. The effects will be added. See, this is the brick effect. It is beautiful. This is the 3D option. See the red one, then green, then this one. The 3D effect is looking very standard on this text. So, this is how we can select and apply these tiles. And standard, this is how we can install these tiles. You can get so many color variations and effects from here. In this latest version of Adobe Photoshop, you can get these options easily. You can't get these options on the previous version. These are the KS tiles. See, I'm applying these effects. So this is the end of our today's class. I hope you have understood clearly. If not, then please ask freely. We will surely help you out. Stay tuned. Stay healthy.
How do I bevel or ambush through text? Welcome back everyone. How's everything going? In today's class, we will see how to bevel or ambush to text. So first of all, I'll bring a picture here. This is the picture. You can see a pair of red shoes here. It looks like there is a light on the top of the shoes. So, there is a light shadow on the side of the shoe. I'm not sure you all can see this or not. Now, I'm selecting this shoe with my selection tool. I want to change the background because I want to remove this shadow here. So, I want to change the background and shadow. You must have seen so many brands product pictures. They're really very beautiful, right? They use Photoshop and edit like this. So, I'm showing you exactly how they edit their products. If the lines go out, you have to just press on Ctrl plus D and the selection will be fixed, like this. When removing, remember, you have to hold on Ctrl plus D. Selection has done. Now, I have masked this layer. I am creating a new layer and pulling it below. Now, I am changing the color of the background. I have applied the color, black, but it is not looking good. So I'm going to keep the white color. See carefully. Some parts got messed up. I will fix them now. To fix it, I'm going to click on this black mask layer. Then I will select the brush tool and go to work on it. If you press on B, you will get the brush tool. After fixing the hardness and size, start dragging. Oh yeah, before doing this, set the foreground and background color. When you want to bring back something, set the foreground color white and when you want to erase something, set the foreground color black. See, I've kept the foreground color black and erasing it. And when I want to bring something back, I have kept the foreground color white, like this. See, everything is fixed. I have created another layer and kept it in the middle. Now, I have made the brush flat and increase the size and I have decreased the hardness I want to make a shadow I will click on below of the shoe and I will decrease the opacity now see how it's looking looking like this pair of shoes is floating on the air now I will bring a text here, Lorem Ipsum. Photoshop always keeps this text. I will write here, Adidas. Because Adidas is a Renault shoe brand. I'm just showing you how to do it. I'm not promoting any brand here. So, this is the text. I have increased the text size. How can we adjust this text with this picture? It's our task. I have double clicked my left button on the text and got this tab. See? In this tab section, we have so many options and I have shown you in the last class how we can change the layer styles. So again, you will get these effects and colors from this section. Here we have many ready-made options. We have a blending option here. And after clicking on this, show all effects option. You will get all these things here like color overlay, Gradient Overlay, ETC. When I clicked on this Gradient Overlay option, we saw we have many other options besides. I can also use these options. 
I will add drop shadow now. I'm changing the distance, speed and size from drop shadow. I'm also fixing the opacity. I'm just working with the drop shadow. I have decreased the opacity. Now the gradient overlay option. See, when I'm moving the mouse, and the gradient is also moving, I have set it here. So the text is done. Now, I will again decrease the size. Sorry, I don't want to decrease its size. I want to work with another layer. I have selected the layer too, and decreased the size. And with the text option, I have selected an area. I have just left clicked and dragged. And I'm decreasing the text size. See? Here we have a big sentence. It was already in Photoshop by default. So, I'm going to pick the eyedropper tool and will add on the same color. It is not looking good actually. So, I will make it a bit darker. See? The renowned companies make this type of templates to advertise their product. So, you have to work like this. So, I have shown you how to text with a picture perfectly. So, I can change the font style also. So, I am going to pick it. I have made it right aligned. Now, I can move these two layers together. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I really hope you found this course valuable. But either way, please leave a review and share your experience. Take good care of yourself. Goodbye. Exercise class a bevel or embossed to text. Welcome back to our exercise class. So, you have to work with this picture. You can download it from our exercise file. You have to change the background and add drop shadow. Then add text. Also, change the color ATC. You have to just follow the last class and do this task. And don't forget to post it on our Facebook group or you can also take a screenshot and post it on Q&A. And if you have any confusion, just ask freely. See you in the next class. Stay tuned. How to use shadow and blend? Hello everyone, how's everything going? Today we will see how to use shadow and blend. How can we use shadow and blend on an image? As always, I'm going to open a picture from the files. I picked this mobile picture and I have picked the quick selection tool and just selected everything as as I have shown you you have to just hold on the left button of your mouse and just drag like this and if you want to minus something then carefully minus this part
Yeah, done. After selecting everything, now I have passed my right button. I got this option. I'm choosing the select and mask option. Now, from here, I'm increasing the feather option. I have turned on this option. I have to take new layer now. See? After coming on the new layer, it is looking like this. I have turned on the background visibility. I have double clicked on the background with my left button. Now see, when I have clicked on this drop shadow, there immediately has created a drop shadow. Now, I am selecting the angle. Which angle I want and what will be the distance and the amount of speed. Now if I increase the size, you will clearly see the change. See how to drop shadow works. There is no change in this picture, but we have created a shadow in it. Now it is looking more real and natural. I have increased the opacity. So this is how we have to use the shadow after going in blend mode. It is easy right? You can do it easily. I hope you all have understood clearly. Tell me what do you think? Write a review when you can. I am also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. How to add more gradients and patterns? Hello everyone. I hope everything is going alright. In today's class, we will see how to add more gradients and patterns. So, I'm going to work on this previous project that we have done in the last class. So, we have here pattern overlay and also gradient overlay. You can get all these options here. And if you can't find this option, then go to the window tab and see below. You can get all these options here. So, I have chosen the pattern option. See, this is the pattern tab. I have added it on the scale. And this is the gradient tab. I have also added the gradient tab. If you can't find this option, again you have to go to the window tab and there you will find these options. Okay, here are some options that you don't need. Here we have an import gradient option from which you can import gradients. And we have here restore default gradients. Okay. I am going to restore some default gradients. See, so many things have been added here. I had deleted some options. So, those options have been added again. So, I don't want them. From the basic option, I have selected these options and drag and delete it. From these options, I am going to choose the legacy gradient option. See, here we have the legacy gradient file. I will drag this option over here. See, you will get so many options here. Click on them one by one and it will be applied. The background has changed already. We have changed it in the earlier class. We have also added the shadow here. So, we can apply these effects. We have so many patterns here. We can use patterns from here. So again, from these options, choose the legacy pattern option and you will get this file. See in this file, we have varieties of patterns like dirt, stone, wood and rust. So I am going below. Here we have so many variations of color, paper. And there is a legacy pattern, then nature pattern, then many other patterns we have here. You have to choose any pattern you want from here. Now, I will see how I can work on this layer. I am going to the color overlay option. So, I am going to click on this option. I am going to work with this pattern. From here, 
Select Pattern Overlay. The pattern was selected earlier. That's why this tab is showing. See, only on this selected option, we can see the patterns. Now, if you say, I want to use gradient patterns, you can also do this in the same way. You can get every option here. So, this is how you can use the gradient and pattern options after selecting something. Yeah, so this is the end of this section. I think you have learned so many things. Do practice at home. Otherwise, you will forget these things. And I really hope you found this course valuable. But either way, please leave a review and share your experience. Take good care of yourself. Goodbye. How to make a long vector heart shadow? Welcome back everyone. How are you all? In today's class, we will see how to make a long vector heart shadow. I'm going to create a file first. I'm going to pick the text tool and write a sentence here. Now, I will pick this tool. See here. We have these options. These options are in by default. We have here wild animal files. From this file, I'm going to pick this gorilla from here. To take it, I'm going to the artboard. Then left click and dragging. See, we have this gorilla here. You have to maintain the right size. Now, I'm changing the color of this gorilla. So, I have made the vector. Now I am adjusting the text with this image. So I am going to change the name. I will give King Kong. Now I can change the color of this text. I am going to pick this color. No, I am going to pick the previous color. I will match the vector color with the text color. So. I'm going to add the same color here on this vector. After selecting this tool, we can do merge shape. Then you can use shortcuts also. So after clicking over this, the merge shape will be done. So I've copied this layer and I'm giving the name of this layer. To copy, you have to press going to. From these two layers, I'm going to add this layer to a group and also giving a name which is shadow. From here, I have opened this tab and choose color overlay. Now, I will press on OK. So now, if I press on Ctrl plus J on this layer, another layer will be copied automatically. See? And so many copied layers have been created. Now, I can select all these layers and can do merge shape. After selecting these layers, right click on your mouse and choose merge shape. See how it's looking. There has created another part because I have done the merge shape here. Here we have 45 shapes. I have copied the shape and set it with this shape. Now I have copied again and again, fixing the size with this. There will be no gap in between. And I'm going to do this process again and again.
Yeah, done. I will bring another copy here and go to set it properly. Setting done. I will do the same thing here again. I have done the merge and adjusting. So, now I want to join this part. I want to take the shadow out of this artboard. Like this. If you have to set it, I'm going to decrease the opacity now. See, this shadow is looking like going downward. So, it is called hard shadow. Now I can change the color. I can change it from color overlay. This black one, or you can use any color. For product packaging, logo, branding, or vector art, you can work like this. So, I'm going to pick the black one here. That's how you can make long vectors and hard shadow. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. How to cast a realistic shadow on the background? Hey everyone. I hope you're doing very well. In today's class, we will see how to cast a realistic shadow on the background. Let's start. So, first I'm going to open an image. This is the picture for the background. And I'm going to open another picture beside. Now, I want to change the background. So, with the quick selection tool, I'm going to do a mask on this picture. See, I'm selecting this girl properly, like this. Now I have clicked on the right button and chosen the select and mask. Done. Now I have picked the brush tool and just clicked on the sides, so that the parts that were not showing properly will show. This curly hairs will show properly. I have shown you this task earlier. How to remove the background and how to work with the sensitive parts. If you remember, I have increased the feather a little bit. After marking on this decontaminate color option, the new layer with layer mask has been created. Okay, now I have dragged this image here. The background color and the t-shirt of this girl is yellow. Not yellow. Orange or something. I think I'm colorblind. I have adjusted these two images. See these two pictures are mixing with each other. Which is not good. So, I have to make a difference with the shadow. So now, I want to give a shadow here. You have to make sure that everything has to look real. I have unlocked the background. And I'm going to the filter tab. And from the blur gallery, I have chosen the field blur. Now, I will work with this. I'm fixing the angles. So, I took up in this point. Okay. See, there is no difference. So, from this layer style, I will open this drop shadow option. I'm increasing my opacity. See how the backside is looking. It is like a dark shadow. I have increased the distance and also decreased the opacity. I have increased the size. See, there are two shadows. I'm working with this shadow and I will work with the other one later. So, it is almost done. To do the other one, I have clicked on this plus icon.
These two shadows have done. Okay? Now I will apply some solid colors. I want to apply a pink color here. Here, we have the pink color. See, now it is looking like a real shadow. After applying the solid color, it is looking real and natural. Done. I hope you have understood everything clearly. That's all for today. Tell me what you think. I really hope you found this course valuable. But either way, please leave a review and share your experience. Take good care of yourself. Goodbye. Exercise class cast a realistic shadow on the background. Welcome back to our exercise class. I have given you these pictures on your exercise file. You have to do masking on this picture and then make a shadow also. Realistic shadow. Then you have to post the before and after pictures on our Facebook group. Or you can take a screenshot and post it on the Q&A. See you in the next class. Stay tuned. How to add filters and effect. Hey everyone, how's everything going? In today's class, we will see how to add filters and effects. First of all, I'm going to open a picture. From my file, I will show you how to apply filter effects on this picture. I have given these pictures on the exercise file. So, this is the picture. I will go to the filter tab. Then, I am going to select this filter gallery. It is processing. It will take time because, see below, it is 100%. So, I will decrease it. I will make it 25%. See the difference? Now, I will decrease it further. I have made it 12%. Now it is perfect. Now, focus on the right side. We have here artistic, brush stroke, then sketches, style and texture, and many other options we have here. Now, when I will click on these filters with the left button, you will see the difference. See, it is processing. It will take some time. Processing complete. Done. It is the first filter from Artistic. Then this is the cutout effect. Now, if I change these levels, number of levels, then age, you will see the changes. You can see, it has changed. I am decreasing the age now. This is how we can apply an effect. Then I will go to the brush stroke. This is the first one. You can see the difference. If you don't see any difference, I am zoomed it in. Now, you will see the difference. You can also see the difference by turning off and on the visibility option. So, this was the brush stroke effect. Then, I will choose from a sketch. This one. It is processing. Oh, sorry. There is a problem. Both the foreground color and the background color were white. I am going to select blue color. I will again go to the filter gallery. See, I have selected this effect from the sketch. So, this is the effect. 
Can you see the difference? As I have chosen the blue color, now it is looking like it is blue sketch art. You can select any color from the color board. Now I will increase and decrease these levels and show you the changes. See the difference? It is looking like a real sketch. Now I will apply the texture. You can see the changes. I'm zooming it in. I'm turning on and off the visibility option so that you can see clearly. You can see it become sharper. To save the changes, press OK. It is processing. Yeah, done. So this is how you can apply filters and effects. I hope you have understood everything clearly. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I am also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to use Camera Raw Welcome back everyone. I hope you are doing very well. This class is very important class for you. So please give your full attention to the class. In today's class, we will see how to use Camera Raw. How can we use the Camera Raw tool? This is the opposite side of Adobe Lightroom. As always, I will open a picture. I am going to work on this picture. I will apply the camera raw tool on this picture. So, this is the picture. Now, go to the filter tab. Then see below. Select the camera raw filters. The shortcut is Shift plus Ctrl plus A. This is the option. Today, we will work with this option. So, I have selected this option. You can also use the shortcut. So, this is the tab. See on the right side. We have so many options here. You can use any option. I have increased the size. From here, you can do zoom out and zoom in. And this is the hand tool. With this hand tool, you can move this picture. This is white balance tool. After selecting, you can adjust the temperature. Just up down the levels and you will see the changes. I can choose any color and it will give an effect based on that color. See, it is working like this. And this is the color sampler tool. With this tool, you can choose any color as a sample. See, it is collecting color samples from here. I have cleared the samples. Now, this one is the targeted adjustment tool. After selecting this tool, it will adjust those areas that I want to adjust. It will target those areas and will give necessary adjustment. See, I have clicked here with the left button, then dragging and again clicked here. When I will drag my mouse, you will see the changes. See, the color is becoming darker and lighter. Just drag and brightness will change. Now, this is the transforming tool. With this key, you can transform. So, set this point from here to this corner. Now, if I change this level, see, it is moving vertically. You can move it horizontally also, like this. Then I am increasing the rotor level also. Then it is scale level. And this level will work when you will press X. Press X and move this level. You can see the changes. Offset Y can move this image up and down. This is spot removal too. I will remove one spot and add another spot with it. So I have marked this area. See carefully. 
these two area size is the same. When I will drag this here on this shoes, see, this shoes shadow is here. Then we have a red eye removal tool. We don't have red eyes here. You will find some pictures that because of the camera flash and the eyes become red. So that time you can use this tool to remove red eyes. Then this tool is used as a brush on camera raw. I'm pressing the third bracket right and left button to increase and decrease the size. Here we have option size, then feather. I'm changing these levels. You can see the changes. If you don't want to use a shortcut, then from here you can increase and decrease your brush size. I'm increasing the brightness on this part. Now, I will select some areas from here. So, I have selected these trees or whatever. I will show you what I'm going to do with them later. Now I will change these levels. Temperature. Highlight. Then I am increasing and decreasing the contrast. You can see those leaves. They are changing. Then see below. I am changing the saturation. You can see the color is now more vibrant. So it worked only in that specific area. I have selected. Then this is the curve tool. Now I will change all these levels. See, this picture is totally changed. I have given an effect here manually. Then I can fix the details from this tab. I am changing these levels, amount, radius, detail, then masking. You can adjust this. Then this tab is as L adjustments. From this tab, you can fix the color. You can see the changes by increasing and decreasing these levels. It is the opposite tool of the Lightroom. See how the color is changing. I am increasing and decreasing the amount also. You can see here is coming a vintage effect. Here we have different modes also. You have to adjust these levels as your preference. Now on this preset, you have so many other options. Here I have less options because I have deleted some options. See, I am applying one by one. These are ready-made effects. You can see the differences. So, I am going to cancel all this. I was just showing you how this tool actually works. I have minimized this tab. Maybe you will not get this effects like this. So, I am going to show you. On my settings, I keep this effects like this. So, I will give you all this effects on the camera raw folder. And the file name is source. We have here a total of 41 items. I will give you all these items on the camera raw folder. And you can keep them on your settings. So you have to go to the update, then the roaming file, then Adobe file. Then you will get your camera raw folder. I have brought the camera raw tool by pressing on the shortcut. See? I had these things on my presets. See on this file. I have this named etc. Similarly, I have these things here and these options. I have here also. See below. And these options also I have here. Because I had these things before. I kept these options on my settings before. Now I want to add more. I have created a new folder here. I am giving the name MXP. I will give you the 41 modes here that I have created manually. I am giving you these modes so that 
you can do this task easily. It's a big bonus for you all. So, I have copied these modes and just passed them on this file. Yeah, done. See, it hasn't come yet. I will not come because I put them here just a little bit ago. So, I have cut this Photoshop tab. When I open it again, then those modes will come again. So, I have closed all these tabs. I'm going to open it again. Here it is. I will again open the camera tool tab. See, these modes are here. You will find all the 41 modes here. See, when I will apply this, the mode will change one by one. Every mode is different from one another. We have so many beautiful effects or modes here. You will get them as ready-made effects. Just press one by one and you get your desired one. I have created these modes manually. So, as a bonus, I am giving you all these effects. So don't forget to give thanks to me. <laughs> uh, so, I'm applying this effect. See how beautiful it is. I have selected this. Yeah, done. I hope you have understood everything clearly. If you don't, please ask your question. Me and my team members will surely help you out. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to vanish points? Welcome everyone. I hope you are doing very well. In today's class, we will see. How to vanish points in Adobe Photoshop. How can we vanish any part or we can replace that part with another part. And for this tool, I will use this all things I will show you in this class. So I have opened a picture. Here is a building. Now I want to vanish this wall. So first of all, I will go to the filter tab. See below. Select this vanish point. You can also use the shortcut Ctrl plus A Alt plus V. Then you will get this interface. So we have so many options here. You have to do work with these options. I will show you in detail how they work. The selection grid tool is selected. I have zoomed it in. We have to use hand tools and zoom tools here. We can do it manually here. You can also use the space button to move. I zoomed it in more so that you can see it properly. I have pressed on this create a new grid. Then I have clicked here with my left button then again clicked on the side. Then I have clicked here with my left button then then again clicked on this side. Then again going below and again selected, then dragging beside and clicked. The hole is selected. The more I will drag it upper, the more it will curve. So I don't want it. I want the whole wall. So the grid is done. Now I'm moving. See? Here we have another wall, which is a curved wall. I want to increase this grid now. See, with selecting the move tool, hold one point and drag. It will start to become a curve. See, like this, zooming out, you can see, I have done the grid on the two sides of the building. But there is access on the upper and lower side. 
I'm decreasing it again to fix those parts. I have decreased the grid size. Now I can set the angle as I want. I'm going to press OK. So the grid is completed. You will not see, but we have the grid selection here. I'm going to create a new layer here. A white layer. I have shown you the patterns and swatches. So I have applied a pattern on this layer. Now I want to set it on the wall. That's why I have created another new layer. I'm going to off this visibility option of this layer. I will again go to the filter tab, then choose vanish points. Or you can use a shortcut. See, the grid is already selected. The first one we had was background, then a layer, then this rectangular grid. Now, I will increase the grid size. And I want to bring that picture here. See, here is written, click plus drag in. So, if you want to bring that picture here, you have to hold on the left button of your mouse and drag that picture here. I will show you this later because before that, I have to rasterize this layer. Yeah, done. I am again increasing the grid size. So, I have dragged this picture here. See, it is here. I will set this picture with this wall now. It is fixed. But it is looking bad because we didn't set it. To set it, you have to transform. So I'm transforming it. The size is extra large. So I have to decrease the size like this. I'm curving it also. Almost done. Now, I will set it here. Setting done. Now, I will make another copy. Press ALT to copy. I am going to set it here. So, I will transform it again. I am setting the size. Yeah, done. Now, I am going to add an effect. I am going to pick this effect. I have created a layer mask over it. I picked my brush and kept the foreground color black and background color white. I am increasing and decreasing the size of this brush and I am also setting the hardness and opacity. Now I am going to erase this extra part like this. Yeah, done. So yeah, I have messed up this part. I am going to fix this. Done. Now, I will remove the glass part. You have to be careful while doing this. You have to do it perfectly.
I'm just dragging the brass and erasing it. Try to do it perfectly. Then this glass window, again, I'm erasing and also bringing back the removed part. You have to just control the foreground and background color. While doing this task, just follow my instruction and just concentrate on the changing of the foreground and background color. So, everything is done. Yeah, perfect. You can see the difference by turning on and off the visibility option. So, this is how we can vanish any points or parts and can replace it with another thing. That is the end of today's class. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I am also available for questions. Send me direct message anytime. Oh yeah, this glass part. I'm going to erase this part also. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to fake realistic motion bar? Hey everyone. How's everything going? In today's class, we will see how to fake a realistic motion bar. That means, how can you make a fake realistic motion bar in Adobe Photoshop? Now, the fake motion bar means, like the background of a picture is totally blurred and the subject is clear, where the focus point is placed. I will edit that picture in a way that the blur portion will look like motion. It will work as a motion on your eyes. It will look like the background is not standing. Or it will look like the background is not standing still. It is running. So let's see. I'm going to open a picture first. This is the picture. Here. The background is totally blurred. The focus is only on the man. I'm going to make a copy of the background. Just select this layer and drag here. Copy. Done. Now, go to the filter, then go to the blur. Then choose motion blur. See? 
Here is our motion blur tab. Here we have angle and also preview option. So that we can see the difference by turning on and off this option. This angle is in 0% and distance is in 10%. Now I will customize these options. So I am increasing the angle. Just drag it by holding the left button on your mouse. It will increase. So I am going to keep it 0% and I will increase the distance to 68%. The preview option is on. That's why we can see the change. So ok. Now I will make a mask on this layer. Layer mask done. I am clicking on the white part of the layer mask. See? It came back to its earlier position. Now I am going to pick my brush and I will keep the foreground color white and background color black. Now I will just start erasing the subject only because I don't want to keep the motion on my subject. I just want to keep the motion only in the background. Now I will start erasing. Control the foreground and background color by pressing on the X. I am decreasing the brush size and hardness after pressing on the key. See, I am only erasing the sides carefully. I am not working on the subject. See, when I am doing the sides of the hand, it is becoming like motion. Now I will erase the sides of the whole body like this. If you make any mistake, just press X and swap the color and bring it back and again erase it. See, I have messed up this part. I am fixing it. I pressed on X and fixed it. And again pressed on X. And the white color came back and again I have started to erase it. Legs then shoes. Now I will increase the brush size and I am going to erase this whole area. See the motion is coming back again. What have I done? I have just turned the blur background into a motion background. I am going to fix this leg part. Yeah. Done. You have to always focus on the color. I am also fixing this part carefully. I am just giving it on the sides of the subject so that it can be understood that the subject has a motion. Yeah, done. Now this picture is looking like this man is running. That's why the background has a motion. I hope you have understood everything clearly. If not, then please ask me directly. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I am also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to use Liquify? Welcome back everyone. I hope everything is going alright. In today's class, we will see how to use Liquify in Adobe Photoshop. How can we make a white or thin subject or object? Which tool we have to use? I will show you all these things in today's class. I am going to open a picture now. We have already used this picture in the last class. Now I am going to the filter tab then choosing this option liquify. The shortcut is shift plus ctrl plus x. So this is our liquify tab here. 
we have our layer panel under this panel. It is like the motion panel. We have so many options here. I will show you how they work one by one. So I have picked this tool. Now I am going to work on this picture. I want to make his muscles wide. I have selected and just dragged slowly. See, now the muscle is looking wider. Now, this character will look stronger as I'm pumping this muscles more. I'm also smoothing some parts. Now, this one. Again, I'm making this muscle wide. Just left click and select drag slowly. Now, it is the different part. How can I work on this part? I am going to first pick the red eye. Then select this area. Now, I will increase this part. So, I can increase only this part. Now, I will erase this part. Now, I am going to pick this tool and just select parts. See, it is pumped up. Just click and hold. With this tool, you can make your white picture thin and thin picture wider. I am making wider this leg muscles. When you make a mistake, no problem, just press Ctrl plus Z. Your work will go one step back. Then you can do it perfectly. Press OK to save your changes. I am turning off and on the visibility option. You can see the difference. You can also see the history panel. Now, I will bring another picture which is taken from the front so that the Photoshop can identify everything easily. I will again go to the liquify tab. It has identified the face automatically. You see this marks? Because Photoshop can identify everything from this picture. Nose, eye, hair, everything. Now, I will work on this picture differently. And yeah, here is your layer panel. See, here we have so many options about the face. If I increase, decrease this eye size option. See, this eye is changing. Then eye wide, eye height. You can set these levels as your preference. Then eye distance. It will set the distance between the eyes. Then we have a nose option. I am increasing and decreasing the nose height. You can make your nose sharp and beautiful with this too. <laughs> okay. Then you can make the nose smaller and thinner. Then mouth. You can make it look with a smiling face. Then we have an upper lip option. Then lower lip.
You can set anything on the face. I can also change the face shape from here. See? Then jawline. I'm decreasing the face white level. There will be many times. You have to edit pictures. By using these tools, you fix any default and can make it beautiful. It's a very useful and important tool. We have other options here. You can also see these options. You can select and drag to fix the face shape. I hope you have understood everything very clearly. I have shown you how to use the Liquify tool. From the next class, we will start another section. See you soon. Stay healthy. Stay tuned. How to remove people and text from a picture. Welcome back everyone. I hope everything is going alright. Today we will see how to remove people and text from a picture. So as always, I'm going to open a picture. See, here on this book, there is write and see creative mess. So I'm going to erase this text with the spot healing tool. I have shown you how the spot healing brush works. Now, I will show you how to do it more smoothly. And this is a clone stamp tool. I have shown you, if you want to bring something back, you can use this tool. So, I'm going to decrease this brush size. And I will show you how to properly erase it and keep your focus on the background and foreground color. I'm selecting this area with the lasso tool. Selecting done. Now, I'm going to mark on the selected area only. I'm just dragging on this area. But it didn't remove properly. Here's headphone I think. Now, I will do this again for you. I'm going to select this area with the lasso tool. Then I will go to the edit tab. Then I will choose fill. The shortcut is shift plus F5. I have clicked on this. This is the fill tab. Then choose content hour from here. Morse on normal. And the opacity is 100%. Yeah, okay. It is processing. Now see, it has been removed properly. I'm pressing Ctrl plus D to remove this mark. Now, I will remove this pen from here. Again, I'm selecting it with the lasso tool. And then again, I will go to the fill tab. Okay. Yeah, done. This paint has also been removed. Now, from this history panel, I'm going to bring back everything and see now. This is the difference. Now, if I want to remove both of this text and pen, what will I do? I pick the lasso tool and I'm selecting only the subjects and also the shadow. I can also cut the selection with this tool. I have shown you all these things. See above, those four tools are used to do this kind of work. After selecting, I will go to the edit tab. Then I will choose content hour fill. This option, I have clicked on this. See on right side, 
it is processing. Now, I have to fix the selection here because, see on the right side, both of the text and pane has been removed. I'm just clicking here and fixing the false. Then press OK. I hope you have understood everything clearly. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. Exercise class. Remove an object from a picture. Welcome back to our exercise class. Your task is to remove an object from a picture. I have given you this picture on the XSS file. You have to download this picture and remove this plane from this picture using the fill option. Just follow the instructions from the class and don't forget to post it on our Facebook group. After finishing, come back to our next class. See you soon. Stay tuned. How to remove any color eye from photographs? Hey everyone, I hope everything is going alright. Today, we will see how can you remove any color eye from photographs. If a subject has any default color eye, we can remove it. So, first of all, I'm going to open a picture. See, this picture, the eyes are red colored. So, I'm going to pick the red eye tool. You can find this tool in the spot healing brush tool. Here it is. Just select and mark this eye area. See, it has been removed. Then the right one. It has also been removed. Done. But some stains has left. So, I will select it again. And will erase it. I will do it again and again. I have to remove it perfectly. Yeah. Done. To remove any color from the eyes, you have to just use this tool. Now, I will go to the history panel. See the difference? It was the old picture. And this is the new one. I hope you have understood everything. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I am also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. Exercise class, remove any color eye from photographs. Welcome back to our exercise class. I am going to give you a picture on your exercise file. This one, see, she has red color on her eyes. Just download it and remove this red color with the red eye tool by following the last class. After finishing, you can keep it to yourself or you can post the before and after template on our Facebook group. Then come to our new class. See you soon. Stay tuned. How to remove pimples and scratches from any human being's image? Hey everyone, how is everything going? In today's class, we will see how to remove pimples and scratches from any human being's image. Firstly, I will open a picture from my file. This is the picture. We can see she has so many scratches and dark spots on her skin. So, I have zoomed in this picture so that I can see the pimples and scratches properly and I can remove them perfectly. I have copied the background from here. Then I'm going to pick the spot healing brush tool. I'm decreasing the size. I 
I have picked this tool from here. Spot healing brush tool. I have clicked here and see that spot has been removed. Just click on the scratch or pimple. It will go away like this. See, almost gone. This skin is looking clearer now. Now, see here, she has a big pimple. How can I remove it? I have selected this patch tool. Then, I will mark only on this pimple spot. Then I have clicked on the left button and I am holding it and dragging on this side. See, it has been removed. Then this dark spot. It has also been removed. Then this one. You can work like this. It is easy, right? We can work with this tool also. Like this. Just click on the spot area. Now, I'm going to pick this content hour move tool. I'm selecting this area. No, not this area. I'm going to select this area. Which is clear without any spots. And I will remove it here. See. Those spots have gone and I will again pick the spot healing brush and will remove these spots. Just click on your left button if you want to do it perfectly. Zoom in the picture and work on that area. And for pimples, use pastels. You can also use the spot healing brush. Just like this, you have to remove scratches or pimples from your skin. I hope you have understood everything very clearly. If not, then ask me directly through Facebook group. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I am also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. Exercise class, remove pimples and scratches. Welcome back to our exercise class. I have given you this picture. See, this girl has scratches and pimples on her skin. You have to just remove them and you have to show us the result. Post your task on our Facebook group or post it on the Q&A section. After finishing this task, move on to the next class. See you soon. Stay tuned. How to repair or retouch any old damaged image? Hello everyone. I hope everything is going alright. In today's class, we will see how to repair or retouch any old damaged image. I will do this whole work with the spot healing brush. So, I am going to open a picture. This is the picture. The condition of this image is very poor. This is an old image. If I zoom in this picture, you will see the quality has totally damaged and there are some scratches also. It has a frame also. But this frame also didn't set properly. To adjust this, I have to create new shapes. 
and I will remove all the scratches with the spot healing brush tool. So I picked a rectangular shape. I'm recreating this frame with these shapes. You can change the color. Just pick the color with the eyedropper tool and apply on it. I'm applying the white color. The frame is ready. Turn on and off the visibility option to see the difference. Now, I'm going to copy the background. I have already shown you how to copy a background. So, I have copied the background. I have zoomed in. I can increase the resolution. I have shown you that tiger picture. I made that picture a higher quality picture by increasing the resolution. Then I picked the spot healing brush tool. I'm decreasing the size. I'm just dragging over this spot. See, it has been removed perfectly. Now I will fix this area. Just click with the left button. I'm decreasing the opacity. Then over this nose, you can see, there are so many scratches. So, I'm going to remove all this. See, I'm dragging over this. And it has been removed. Increase and decrease the brush size. And just drag and click. There was a problem with her teeth. I have fixed it. Then here. So the face is done. Now, I will go to the hair. Now, I will again remove the scratches from here. To fix this kind of problem, just use the spot healing brush. Yeah. Done. Now, on the right and left side, we have two big scratches. I'm going to remove it. I'm just dragging with my spot healing brush. Some scratches left on the neck. So, I will remove them also. Then this side. You can also use the spas tool here. Just select a part. and match it with the other part then the below part similarly i will remove it with the spot healing brush tool like this so yeah perfectly done see now this picture is looking like a high quality picture i'm turning on and off the visibility option 
You can see the difference. I hope you have understood everything clearly. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime if you have any confusion. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. How to instantly remove the white background of a logo? Hey everyone, how are you all? We will start a new section from today, which is blending mode. In today's class, we will see how to instantly remove the white background of a logo. First of all, I'm going to open a picture from the file. This is the picture and I will also open four pictures of the logo. So, I'm going to drag this picture here over this picture. See, this logo picture has white background. Now, I will go to the modes option to change the white background. I'm going to pick the darker color. See, the white background has gone. I'm doing it again. So that you can understand it properly. Now you can move it and also press Ctrl plus T to transform it. I will again drag this picture here and similarly I will change the white background. You have to just change the mode. You can choose any mode. You don't have to choose only the darker mode. Now I am going to pick a solid color. Red color. Now I will change this option one by one. See, the love shape color is changing or I can choose gradient from here. This gradient were created earlier. So, now I'm going to pick a gradient from here. This one is beautiful. I'm setting the angle from here. And I'm also setting scale. Then OK. See, these love shape colors have changed. And now, if I change this angle, the colors will also change. Now, I will delete this layer. I'm dragging this picture here. I have placed this picture here. And now, I will change the modes. I'm changing one by one. So, I'm going to multiply. Now, I will move it here. And I'm going to set it on this corner. After setting, you have to change the modes. And see which mode is going with this logo. I hope you have understood how to change the white background of an image. If you have any confusion, Please ask me freely. That's it for today. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. Exercise class. Instantly remove the white background of a logo. Welcome back to our exercise class. I'm giving you a picture on your exercise file. This picture. You have to bring logos on this picture. And, and then, change the background. As I have shown you in the last class, just follow those instructions. Then you have to judge your work. 
whether you are doing it perfectly or not. If you see you are doing it perfectly, then come to our next class. See you soon. Stay tuned. How to change images inside color blending? Hey everyone, how's everything going? In today's class, we will see how to change image inside color blending. How can we bring a text or shape into blending mode? I'm going to open a picture from my files. This is the picture. Now, I'm going to pick a shape from here. Now, I'm going to give a color on the shape. I want to match this with the t-shirt color. So, I'm giving it a red color. Now, I can transform it as I want. And I'm setting it here properly. Now, I'm making these pointed corners rounded. Now, I'm changing the mode from here. So, I have changed it. Then I copied this shape. Just press the control button and left click and drag. It will be copied. Then I'm setting it here above this shape. I'm going to change the color now. I picked this color. No, I will choose another color. Then I will choose mode from here. I have made this one little bit darker. I have picked the color burn mode for the shape. Now, I can type text over the shape. I have created another new layer. I will decrease the text size. I have picked the text tool and selected an area over here. Now, I am giving text here and also increasing the size. So that it can be set in this area. Everything has settled. I brought this text from by default. Just select an area and increase the text size. When I will decrease the text size, other parts of this text will also add here. Now, I will change the font style. So, I have picked this font. This is the text tool tab. I am going to set the text. I have made a copy of this text. I am decreasing the text size. This is how you can make magazine poster, kudos, it is it, with the blending mode.
Now, I will give some text also here. So this was our class. This is how we can bring a shape over an image and can adjust the color and everything with blending. I hope you have understood everything clearly. I really hope you found this course valuable. But either way, please leave a review and share your experience. Take good care of yourself. Goodbye. Exercise class. Change images inside color blending. Welcome back to our exercise class. We have done the blending work on this picture in the last class. So, you have to do the same. Create shapes, then add text. Then you have to judge which one is looking good. I have given you this picture on your exercise file. I really want that. Yours one looks more perfect than mine. After completing this task, come to our next class. We will start on new section from the next class. So, stay tuned. See you soon. How to use an artboard? Welcome back everyone. I hope everything is going alright. Today, we will learn how to use an artboard? First of all, I'm going to create a new file. The height and width is 7 inches. Then, I'm going to mark this artboard option. Now, create. See above the artboard, there is a watermark. And here, a group has created. It means, when I will add something on the artboard, I can create many other new artboards, but when I will remove this mark, I won't get this option. And when I will right click on this option, here this step will come. I have to choose a new document. Now I have unmarked this option and clicked on create. So I have created a new file. See here is only a background layer, but the previous one had a layer named artboard. So now I don't want it. So I have deleted this. I am going to work on this. I have unlocked the background layer. I have right clicked here on this layer. Then I am choosing an artboard from layers. Then press OK. See? Now a new layer has been created. Now I can delete this background. No problem. But this artboard layer is still here. Now. I can create many other artboards here. We call this tool move tool. But here is another tool which is an artboard tool. So I have selected this tool. After that we have 4 plus signs around the artboard. Now if I click on this plus sign another artboard will create here. After selecting this tool if I select an area an artboard will create automatically. After selecting See above, the interface has changed. In this option, we have auto layers, auto canvas and many other options we have here.
Then here we have white. We can make it transparent. Then we can make it black. This preference tab has opened. Then coming on this interface option, we have here artboard background color theme. So I picked the black one. See, the background has changed. I have decreased the size. Now I'm dragging here. See another artboard is creating here. Then I click the plus sign. Another artboard has been created here. Then see, I'm clicking on the plus sign. And another new artboard will create continuously. And I can also create an artboard custom. Now, you can't move it with a move tool. You have to move it with an artboard tool. I have turned on the auto select option. Now, see these artboards are selected. So I have selected the artboard 6. I have picked the rectangle shape. And picked a color. I am creating it outside the artboard. See, here I have created a shape without any problem. But we can't create shapes outside the artboard. On other times, because that time we use only the board. But here we have made different types of artboards. That's why I can now create shapes anywhere. I picked the move tool and now I can move the shape and can set it on any artboard. See, now I can set it on any artboard. See the layers. Now I have moved the shape on artboard 6. The artboard 4, 5. I am copying the shapes with holding on the ALT button. And setting them on the artboards. Now I can give them many types of sizes. I can make custom sizes also. Here we also have iPhone X size. And here we have height and width. If you can't move this, you can move it with holding on the control button. So I'm going to choose the iPhone X template. See, it has created. You can find many other templates here. Template means artboard. Then I can also change the size, color of these shapes. So this was our class. I hope you have understood it properly. If you have any confusion, ask me freely. Me and my team will surely help you out. See you soon. Stay tuned. Goodbye. How to use duplicate artboard and using guides? Welcome everyone. How's everything going? Today we will see how to duplicate artboards and use guides. Mainly, we will see how to create a duplicate artboard, how the duplicate artboard works, and how we can make smart objects. An artboard has already been created here. I have shown you in the last class how to create an artboard. Now, I want to give it a size. So, I have given a web size. Now, I want to create other new artboards here. Now, I can create custom artboards. I am fixing the height and width. I have not used any template here. You can use templates or you can create custom. Now, I will create another artboard. I'm going to give it a ready-made size. So, now I'm choosing this size, iPhone 7 or 8. Now, I want to bring a picture here. And I will change the background of this image. So, we have this strawberry picture here. Now, I have clicked on my left button and holding this picture. And I will release it. So, it is very large. I will click on Ctrl plus T and decrease the size. After transforming, when I will click on this right mark, 
this picture will automatically go inside any of these artboards. Now, I want to select only the strawberry picture. So, I will go to the select tab. Then I will choose the subject. See, it is processing. Now the subject has been selected. That means, the strawberry has selected. Then I'm going to pick the lasso tool. After picking the lasso tool, I will click on right button. Then I will choose select and masking. See, the masking tab appeared. So, I will just increase the feather option and press OK. So, the subject is selected here. Here we have two layers. So, I will delete one layer. Now see, we have only the strawberry picture. There was a background behind the strawberry. But now it is gone. Now I will transform this strawberry. Just press Ctrl plus T. It will transform. But see, the quality is getting better. For this, I can use the rasterized option. I have shown you how to transform a bad quality picture into a good quality picture. So after coming on this layer, I will click on my right button. Now, I will choose the convert to smart object option. So, it has become a smart object. Now, if I increase or decrease the size, the quality will remain the same. So, I copied the subject by clicking on the ALT button. Then I will copy it again and set it over this artboard. I will transform it and set it here. If you want to move the artboard, then hold on the artboard move tool. I have transformed it and also made it a bit curved. Yeah, done. Now I will pick the text tool and will add some text besides the strawberries. I'm getting a strawberry here. I'm decreasing the text size. And I'm also changing the font style. Increasing the size a little bit. I will copy this text now. Just press the ALT button to copy and drag. Then another one. I have made another copy of the strawberry and fixed the angle. I am fixing the size again. Now, I will identify the strawberry because I want to show you how to change the color. So, I have clicked the right button on this layer. Then, I will choose this option, New Smart Object via Copy. Now, it has become a specific smart object. It is not different from the other strawberries, but the others are in the same group. If I change one of the strawberries color, the other's color will also change. But if I change only this strawberry's color, only this color will change. Others will remain the same. When I double click on the smart object, it will come here. Now, I will go to the adjustment tab and then I will change these levels, hue, saturation and lightness. See the color is changing. I'm going to keep it yellow. Now, I will press Ctrl plus S. To save it. Now, I will change any of these colors. So, I will double click on this layer. I am changing the color. I picked the blue color. I can change the color more. Let's see. No, the blue one is good. I have saved the changes. Now see. Every strawberry's color has changed except that yellow one. 
I'm trying to explain to you this. If you make any smart object and make a copy of them, and then if you change any color, the other's color will also change. I came to the smart object again. I have turned off the visibility option. Now, I will pick a custom file from here. Here, we have so many folders. From the folders, from the flowers folder, I am going to pick one flower. Now, I will just click on my left button and drag. I can change the color also. Now, if I save this flower, it will replace the strawberry because I have removed the strawberry and added a flower here. See, here on the place of the strawberries, flowers have added. So this was our duplicate artboard work. And you can see the works you have done here on the history panel. I hope you have understood everything very clearly. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I am also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. Mockup How to create photo frame mockup? Hey everyone, I hope you are doing very well. In today's class, we will see how to create a photo frame mockup. So, I'm going to open a picture. Now, I want to make a photo frame over this. So, I will go to the filter tab. Then, from the render, I will choose the photo frame option. So this picture frame tab has opened. We have so many colors here. I am going to pick this dark brown color. Then, I will go to the advanced section. Here, we have a number of lines. Then thickness. I am fixing these levels. Then from here, merge, size, then arrangement. I am fixing these levels as my preference. And here, we have different types of frames. You can pick any of them. I'm going to again fix these levels. Okay. It is processing. Yeah. Here is your frame. Now, I will press Ctrl plus T and transform this frame. I can increase the size and also decrease the size. So, I have set it. Now, I want to make a shape here. I am taking the rectangle shape from here. I have selected here and just dragging. As my, for as my foreground color was white, so the white color is here. And I have dragged the rectangle layer below layer 1. Now, I have right clicked on the rectangle layer and made it a rasterized layer. Then, I will again right click and choose to convert to a smart object. Now, this is a smart object. I have dragged the layer 1 upper because the frame was in layer 1. And because of the rectangle layer, many parts of the frame were not showing. But when I have dragged the layer 1 upper, that problem has gone. Now, we can see the frame clearly. So, this shape has become a smart object. Now, if I click on this, it will come separately. So now, I will open a picture. I will drag this picture and release it here. See? This picture got inside the frame. The picture was very large. Now, I will press Ctrl plus T and transform it. 
I'm decreasing the size. I want to just set this picture with this frame. I have set it with the frame. Now, I will press on this right mark and save this. I will go to the earlier tab and see here on this frame there is only the apple picture. The part I have set with the frame only that part is here. There is no extra part. I can also change this picture. I have to double click on the smart object. Then this tab will come again. Now I can replace this picture with another picture. I'm going to open another picture. This is dog's picture. So I will again drag this picture and release it here. Similarly, I will transform it. I'm just taking the face of this dog. I can also give different colors or modes. Now, I will press Ctrl plus S and, and here it is. See, it has appeared here, but it is not looking realistic because there is no shadow. So, I will give a shadow to this picture. I will double click on this layer. Here, we have the drop shadow option. So, I have clicked on the drop shadow. Here is the drop shadow tab. I will change the levels of opacity, distance, then, then size. Black color is selected here. Yeah, I have given the shadow. Now, it is looking realistic. So, this is the end of our class. I hope you have understood everything clearly. If you have any confusion, ask me freely. See you soon. Stay tuned. How to create logo mockup? Hey everyone, how is everything going? In today's class, we will see how to create logo mockups. So, first of all, I'm going to open a picture. I will create a mockup with this picture. So, this is the picture. I'm going to work with this picture. Now, I will create a new layer here. Layer 1. Now, I have right clicked here and choose to convert to smart object. So now, it has converted to a smart object. I have double clicked here. If I want to bring scale on the sides of this artboard, I have to press Ctrl plus R. I have them already. Now, I want to see the size. So, I have opened the image size tab. I hope you know how to open the image size tab. I have shown you that in the class. So, here we have height 4000 and width 6000 pixels. This is our image size. Now, I will go to the view tab. Then, I will choose a new guild here. A tab has opened. I will choose a vertical option from here. Okay, now I will click on my left button and drag these guidelines one by one and set them here. I have done this because I want the perfect size. Here we have so many shapes. I have shown you this in our shapes classes, but I want to use the text tool here. So, I have written here B and I am increasing the size. I am setting it in the center. Now, I will change the font style.
you can take any font style from here. So, I'm going to pick this font. I will save it. Now, I will go to the earlier tab. See, the B has appeared here also. Now, I will customize this. After coming on this layer, I will double click on this layer. Then, this layer style tab will open. Here we have drop shadow, outer glow, then inner glow. We have many options here. Now, I will open a background for this picture. This is an iron background. Now, I will drag it here. I will transform it and set it here. See, the B is masked now. When I came to layer 1, an arrow appeared. Then I pressed at the ALT button and the masking was done. Now, I will copy layer 1. I have given a name to this layer, which is logo. And I also gave it a color, red color, so that I can recognize it easily. And I have made this layer 1 a group. When I have clicked on the Ctrl plus G, a group has been created. I have double clicked here. A layer cell tab has appeared. I have added a stroke. I'm fixing the stroke size. Now, I will add drop shadow also. See, I have given a drop shadow. I will decrease the opacity. Now, I will add this drop shadow. I've decreased the distance and also, I'm setting this opacity. I will fix these levels as my preference. I'm setting the angle. I will add another drop shadow. I will again adjust these options. The stroke is not looking good here. So, I'm going to delete this row. Okay, now it is looking good. I'm turning on and off the visibility option of this layer 1. You can see, you can see the difference. Now, I will again go to this layer. See, this B was here. Now, I will pick a shape from here. I will take this bird shape. I'm just dragging. I have given a white color to this shape. Now, I will set it. I will turn off this layer's visibility option. I have changed the color to black. I have saved it. Now, if I came to this layer, see this iron picture set inside this bird shape. Now, I will give it a gradient. From this gradient tab, I am changing the angle. I am changing these levels. No, I will again fix these levels. I have created another layer. I will pick the brass tool now. I am fixing the size. Now, the total work is going on layer 3. I will decrease the opacity. I 
I have added the soft light. See the difference? I can adjust things from adjustment. I'm adjusting these levels like hue and saturation. From this tab, I can keep the B or I can also add A here. I'm changing the font style. I have picked this one. Now, I want to give it a solid color. Now, I will give this bar a stroke. See, I have given a stroke here. I have double clicked on this layer. Then I have added another stroke here. With the older stroke, I have added another stroke. I am changing the color and fixing the size. Ok, done. Now, I will save it and go to the other tab. See, the work is not done because this color fill layers visibility option was on. So, I'm going to turn off this option and save it. I'll go to that tab again. See, it has done. The bird shape is behind the text A. But here on this A, there is a problem. So, I will erase it. Yeah, done. I'm going to save it and will come here again. Yeah, it's done. So, this was our mockup. How can we create a mockup? How can I give it a color? Then, in which background we can make a mockup? I have shown you all. I have shown you all. I have shown you all these things. This is how. This is how you can make a mockup for your logo. I hope you have understood everything clearly. See you in the next class. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. How to create t-shirt mockup? Hey everyone! I hope everything is going alright. In today's class, we will learn how to create t-shirt mockups. So, I'm going to open a picture. I will create a mockup with this picture. I have done work with this picture. I have added a new layer here. I'm going to give a name to this layer, your design. I picked the quick selection tool. Now, I will select this t-shirt only. I will copy this layer now. We have a background here. Then, we have layer 1 here. And above all this, we have a design smart object. I have dragged the layer 1 above. I have brought the t-shirt on your design layer. Now, I am setting these guidelines. I have set these four guidelines and the design will be on the center. Now, 
I will create rectangle shapes on the center. I'm changing the color. Now, I will save it. Now, I will go to the earlier tab. See, this design layer is on the upper position. Now, I will turn off the visibility of layer 1. Now, we can see it. I'm going to set it now. I'm just dragging it and setting it on the earlier t-shirt. See, there's a little bit of a problem here. So, I'm just clicking on the left and right button and setting it perfectly. Yeah, okay. Now, I will decrease the opacity. I will pick the warp tool. I have selected this tool. See the left side. I will pick them one by one. And set them here. The reason is, I want to wrap these lines. See, I'm dragging this little bit. I have to make these lines look realistic. So, I'm wrapping them. Okay, done. Now, I've done the mask on layer 1. Now, I will pick the brush tool. And I will erase these parts a little bit. I will erase these places where I have the shadow. All I wanted to make it look realistic. These designs have to match with the t-shirt. Now, I have turned off the visibility option for these two layers. Now, I will erase the shadow parts perfectly. I am dragging the brush slowly and erasing the sides. Everything is set. It is looking realistic now. I will decrease the opacity. Now, I will have a look at this mode. No, I will keep the normal. I am going to keep the opacity 65%. Now, I will go to your design layer. I have turned off the visibility of these layers. Now, I will add text here. I am going to keep the O of this text. I will transform it and save it. I can also change the color. Now, I have saved it. Now, see it has been placed here. I will again add a new layer. Now, I can add a text here. Hello. Now, I will set this text with O. I will change the font style and also change the color. I am setting it in the center. I have pressed the Ctrl plus S and saved it. But we can't see this text hello properly. So now we can use drop shadow. Here it is a drop shadow. But it will change and look bad. I can keep the shadow very light. Here yeah, it is set now. I can give stroke here. Yeah, I have given a white stroke. Or I can make it black. I am increasing the stroke size. Yeah, 
So this is how we can make a mock-up of a t-shirt. And I can sell these mock-ups on some websites like Freepee, Shutterstroke, etc. I hope you have understood everything properly. Ask me freely if you have any confusion. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to create book cover mockup? Hello everyone, how is going everything? Today we will see how to create book cover mockups. I have already shown you how to create mockup. I will create it similarly, but I will create it on the book cover. So I will open a picture of books. I will create mock on it. Now, I will create a shape with a rectangle tool. So, I have created a rectangle shape. Now, I will change the color. I have picked this color. No. I will pick this one. Now, I will make this layer rasterize layer. You have to just right click on the layer. Then just choose rasterize layer. Now, I will make it smart object. Basically, we make smart object to create mockup. And we can set anything on smart object. Then I can change only that thing. Other things will remain same. Now, I will transform it by pressing Ctrl plus T keys. The reason behind making this layer rasterized was See above on the right side We have a right mark and no mark And on this left side We have the warp option So Whenever I will rasterize this layer The wrap option will come And I can wrap anything As I want As I want to set this shape on the cover of this book Just hold the corner and drag So I will wrap this shape First I will transform it then I'm wrapping it. Drag and set perfectly on the book cover. Like this. Upper part is done. Then this lower part similarly. I will set it. Then this center part. I will drag this corner and setting it. I can also make these corners rounded. I have shown you how to do that. Okay, yeah, done. This shape is adjusted with the book cover. But see here some gaps. I will set it properly. I have double clicked on this layer. And here is our smart object. I will change the column now. I will create some shapes here that I want to show on the book cover page. I have created a rectangle white shape and I have copied it. I will change one of the shape's color. I have picked the red color. Now I want to give a shape her on the center. I will pick this flower. Now 
Now, I will change the color with the eyedropper tool. Now, I will add a text here, Lorem Epsom. I have increased the size. Ok, I have made it uppercase. Then, if I pick the text tool and drag here, you can see, so many texts have been added here. Yeah, done. Now I can add a picture here. So, I have opened this picture. And I will drag it here. Now, I will transform it and set it on the corner. Ok, I pressed Ctrl plus S to save it. See, it has appeared here, but it is not set properly because I have done wrap over this. As this text were not here, I couldn't wrap it properly. So, I will wrap it again. Press Ctrl plus T, then click on the wrap option. Then I will again drag these corners one by one. Yeah, like this. Set it perfectly. So that it looks realistic. Yeah, it has adjusted. I'm just slowly wrapping it. Okay, so yeah, the book cover is ready. I can add anything on the smart object. Now, I will work on this with the brush tool. I'm decreasing my hardness. I have drawn a mark on the center. Now, if I save it, see, that mark has also appeared here. So this is how we can create a mockup on the book cover. If you have any confusion, ask me freely. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to create a business card mockup? Hey everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. In today's class, we will see how to create a business card mockup. Actually, the mockup of a business card is very important. Designers present their designs with mockup. It is mainly used for presentation, like for t-shirt, t-shirt mockup, for book cover image, book cover mockup, and for logo designing. You must have to use mockup. I will open a picture. This is our background image. I will create a business card mockup over this. So, see carefully. Now, I want to make a display. I will create a rectangle shape here. I have picked the rectangle tool. I am fixing the size. White is 1050 pixels and height is 600 pixels.
and I have also given a color. Now, I will make this layer rasterize. No, I will choose to convert to a smart object. So, I have made it a smart object. Now, I am increasing the size. I will place it here. Now, I will click on my right button and I will choose distort. Now see, I can make it curvy. Then I will choose the rotate option. Now, I can rotate it. Ok, now it has been fixed here. I will make a copy of this layer. I have given a name. Now, I will add drop shadow. I am changing these levels. Ok, done. Now, I will copy the layer style of this layer. Copied. Then, I will go to this layer. And now, I will choose past layer style. I have passed it the layer style here. Now, these both layers have the same effects. I have clicked on Ctrl plus T to transform it. Transform means I am rotating it. Now see, it looks like there is another card behind this card. I have copied this layer again and I will drag it below of all layers. I will again rotate this card. Ok, I will give this layer, your design, a red icon, so that we can identify it easily. And I will make these two layers a group. Just press Ctrl plus G to make a group. I am giving it a name. I have double clicked on your design layer. Now, I will design a business card. So, I have picked the text tool. I will write my name here, Fahim. This is my nickname. My actual name is Afridi Bishosh Fahim. Ok, I will change the color now. I will also change the font style. Now, I will bring a ruler guide. Just press Ctrl plus R and drag these lines and set them on the sides. I have set it on the center so that I can set this text on the center. Now, I will take a rectangle shape. I have aligned this line with the text. I have created a new layer. I will now bring a circle shape. Now, I will give it a gradient shape. We couldn't see this shape earlier. I will drag it upper. Now, we can see it. I will give a stroke to the shape. I am decreasing the opposite. I have erased the stroke. I will copy the shape. And drag them side by side. I'm not showing you any professional business card. I'm not showing you any professional business card. It's a normal card. I'm just showing you how to do it with mockup. And if you want to see how to create professional business cards, then I will show you how to design them professionally. It is dependent on your response. I will increase the class lectures 
if you all respond. I'm adding some text here. I'm writing graphics designer. I have changed the size and font style. Then I will press ELT and copy this graphics designer text and drag it on the below. I will change the font style. Now, I will give my address here because a business card carries all the information about the business. I have added my address. Then I have created a round shape here and I will change the color. I have made it black. I will decrease the shape size. I have used here red and black color which is not appropriate for professional work because they don't look standard. Always try to use light colors. So I have dragged this address on the left side. Okay, I will align it. Now I will open this icon pictures from files. So I will drag this location icon here. I have changed the color to white. Then I will transform it and I will set it here beside the address. I will set it over this black circle. I will make another copy of this text. I will change this text. I'm going to give my company's email address here. I have set it here. I will drag these two layers upper. I will align these two text now. Now, I will bring this ruler guides here. And set them around. I have dragged the internet icon here. I have transformed it. And I changed the color to white. I will set it beside of my email account. Then I will add the phone number. Similarly, I will copy this email address and I will remove this text and I will give the phone number here. And I will bring this phone icon here. Similarly, I will transform it and set it on the beside of the phone number. I have added a ruler guide on the right side. Now, I have to see everything is good or not. You change the background of your business card. Here was the rectangle shape. I can change this shape.
You can make the pointed shapes rounded. I have increased the stroke. I pressed Ctrl plus S to save it. See, it has saved here and those information have placed here. This is how we can do mockup. I have created a design here. Also, I have added the mockup. Usually, after creating a mockup, we create a design and then the design is converted to a smart object and we work on that smart object and it has saved later. I hope you have understood everything clearly. Mockup is very important task in Photoshop. If you want to save elements to anywhere, they will demand mockup. The most selling element is mockup. So, practice doing mockup repeatedly. If you have any confusion, ask me freely. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. Export. How to export and save files. Welcome back everyone. How is everything going? In today's class, we will see. How can we export and save files? So, this is the project. I was created in the earlier class. Today, I will work on this. So, if you want to save this, go to files, then click on save as, it will be saved. Or you can use the shortcut, which is shift plus control plus s. And you can also export from here, from exporting. Click on export as or use shortcut ALT plus shift plus control plus W. So the shortcut is very large. So just click on this option. You can save it from here. Like save on your computer or save to cloud documents. To save in your computer, you can click here. And if you don't like it, you can give mark on, don't show again, this option. So, I will save from here. Here it is a PSD file. PSD file is the most original file. PSD is the raw file of Photoshop file. And we have many other options here. I can save this file in JPG file format. I will click on the save button. This tab has opened. It shows what is the quality. Here is the maximum quality given. OK. Now I will go to my files to see if it has been saved or not. Yeah. In this layer files, this project has been saved. Now, I can also re replace it. See, here this JPG file has another version. If I do work on this project more and want to save it, then I can replace it. See, this tab has opened. It is asking, do you want to replace it? You have to click yes if you want. You can change this level from here. You can change the quality and resolution.
we have here low maximum high quality options and if you drag this on the right side it will save in high resolution okay it has saved so there are two jpg files saved i will again show you how to save it i have saved it in psd format See, here we have two PSG files. I have opened the image size tab. I hope you know how to open this tab. Go to the image tab, then click on size. I have used shortcuts. You can see the shortcut. You can see here, resolution, height and weight. You can change these levels. I have increased the resolution. OK. It is processing. Yeah, it is done. Zoom in and zoom out to see properly. I will save it again. I am saving it in JPG format. See? Its size is MB, which is very high because I have increased the resolution. Okay, it has saved. Here it is. Now, if I zoom in this. picture you can see the quality because of the high resolution this picture is not distorting Here it has saved and see this picture. I have zoomed in and you can see the
quality is so bad. It got shattered. It's only because of the resolution. Now, I will save this high resolution picture in PSD format. Okay, it has been saved. Here it is. See the size. Its size is 247 MB. This one is 26 MB. And this one is also 26 MB. Only this one is big. I have turned off the background image visibility. Now, we have only these three pictures. I will save these pictures. I am saving it in PNG format. And the PNG format picture will save in a transparent mode. That means, there will be transparency on behind of this picture. Okay, see below. It is processing. It has been saved here. Here it is. Its size is 35.6 MB. See here, it has no background. The background is transparent. So, this is how you can save your projects. And for selling this on an online platform, you have to save these projects in EPS format. In the next class, I will show you how to save in EPS format, when you should use EPS format, and how much. Resolution a picture needs for selling it on market. ETC. And here we have so many other formats here to save. I hope you have understood everything clearly. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I am also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to export animation GIF? Welcome everyone. How are you all? Today we will see how to export animated GIF. I have shown you the work for an animation particle toolbox. And in this class, I will show you how we can save an animation GIF. Let's start. So, this is the picture. I have done the animation for the picture. Here is our animation particle toolbox. I have turned on the density from here. Then we have 4 options here. Up, down, left and right. Click on any direction. And it will move that direction. I will click on the up option. It is moving upper. Here we have 2 objects. Small and big. Now. If I want to see the timeline, I will go to the window tab. Then, I will choose the timeline option from here. I have turned on the play button. And see here. It is moving animation wise. Now, I have turned on these two options also. And I will again click on this up option. I am turning off the visibility option of these layers. Now, 
I will click on this play button again. Now you can see the animation. I'm making animation with Photoshop. It's a very interesting matter, right? Now I will save it. I'm choosing save for with this option. Now you can give a name here on the presets and here they have a give option. We can choose JPEG, PNG or anything and you can preview this. Click on the preview option from here. You can see here how the animation is working. Here it is. I'm zooming it out. Now say. I will save it now. I have clicked on save. I'm saving it on my desktop. From the work folder, this export section, I've given you this animation file. I have clicked on the save option. It is processing. I guess it has saved. I will check it now. Yeah, here it is. I'm going to open it. See? Here is our GIF. This is how we can make animated GIFs. I hope you have understood how to make animation GIF and how to export it. That's all for today. See you in the next class. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to make an export GIF? Welcome back everyone. How's going everything? Today we will see how to make an export GIF. The last class was over the animation GIF. But this class is about to how to make only GIF and how to export it. For that, first of all, I have to take the timeline. So, I will go to the window tab. Then from that tab, I will choose the timeline option. Here is our timeline. Then I will choose this option, create frame animation. Now, from here, I can create a shape. Before that, I will fix this tab. I have made them small, so that I can see it easily. I will pick this round shape. And I have picked a color also. I have placed it above here. Now, I will bring these ruler guides and place them here. I have locked these guidelines. Everything will move but these guidelines will not move because I have locked them. I am copying this shape and placing them in serial one by one. I'm making this last one curvy. I'm pressing on ALT plus shift button to making it curved. I've saved it. Okay. Now I'm setting these shapes perfectly. I have created a new layer. I picked the brush tool from here. I am fixing the hardness and size. I will give an effect here. I 
I picked the black color. Here, it is looking like a shadow. I have decreased the opacity. So, here we have 9 files without background. I have picked the black color. Here, it is looking like a shadow. I have decreased the opacity. So, here we have 9 files without background. So, I will create 9 layers. No, I will create more. Okay, here we have 18 layers. I have turned off all the layers visibility option. Now, I will turn on the visibility option one by one. I will see them one by one. I have turned off this layer. See every layer has turned off. Now, I will turn off the number 3. The copy number 2 will open. So, this is how it works. Now, I will check them one by one. Now, 5. Then 6. I have turned on the play button. Now see. How it's working. It is looking like this ball is bouncing up and down. This is why I have taken 18 layers here. This ball will go upward. Then it will again go downward. Now focus on these layers. You can see the round shape. It is going upward to downward with the flow of layers. Then it again going upward with the flow of layers. I have again clicked on the play button. See, it is moving upward and again downward. So this is a GIF. Now, I will export it. Go to the file tab. Then from export, choose save for web. I have clicked on the save button. I have saved it on my desktop. Yeah, here it is. I hope you have understood how to make GIFs and how to export them. If you have any confusion, ask me anything. Me and my team will surely help you out. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. Exporting Artboards file. Hey everyone, how are you all? In today's class, we will see how we can export artboard files. I am going to save this artboard. So, I will go to the files, then choosing save as, and the tab will open. From here, I will click on save on your computer. It will save in PSD format. I can also replace it. But you have to be careful that you have to save it in PSD format. I have clicked on the save button. Then OK. Now it will be saved. It has saved. Now I can also export it. From the file tab, choose export as. From export option. 
then this export template will appear. See here, we have six artboards and they are in particular places and they are in a GIF mode. You can change it and they have different sizes. I have changed the scale to 50% and the next one. Similarly, it will make it 50%. No, I will change them to 100%. I can select all of these artboards and change the mode, sizes, etc. together or I can do this separately. I'm doing it separately so that you all can understand the work properly. Now I'm clicking on this export button. So I will save on this 19 number folder. I've clicked on this button. I guess it has exported. I'm going to take it. Here they are. We have here six artboards. I will open the strawberry one. I hope you all have understood how this exporting system works in Adobe Photoshop. If you have any questions, ask me freely. We will try to help you out. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to install JRXP installer. Hey everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. In today's class, we will see how to install JRXP installer. I'm giving you this JRXP Installer. In this 18 section plugin folder, you have to just download it. After downloading, you will get this JRXP installer. Before installing, you have to go to the settings. Then go to the Windows. And from Windows Security, Click on Virus and Threats Protection. Then from here, you will get Virus and Threat Protection Settings. Then here, you will get so many options like Real-Time Protection, Cloud Delivered Protection ETC. You have to turn off and dismiss all those options. After turning off these options, click on this JRXP installer, then choose Extract files. This option. OK. See, files are extracting. This is the file. Click on this with the right button. Then choose the Run Administrator option. I have clicked on Install. Now, it is installed. It will be installed. It is processing. So, installation is successfully completed. OK. See, the background has launched. Now, I will find it from here.
Here it is. Click on the right button. Then you will see more option. Click on more. Then choose the open file location. Now it will take you to the location of this file. Then you have to send it to a desktop so that you can find it easily. Now I have set it. So installation has completed. Now I want to open this file. See it is processing. It's opening. Yeah it has opened. Here we have Adobe After Effect. Then we have Adobe Photoshop versions here. From 4 to 9. I can use them from here. So the JRXP installer is very important software. Download it. And when you have to use it, I will tell you. It's a premium software. But I'm giving you this without any cost as a bonus. So I hope you have understood everything clearly. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to install animation particle toolbox and how to use it. Welcome everyone. How is everything going? Today we will see how to install an animation particle toolbox and how to use it. See here, I have opened some files from my file manager. See on the right side, there is a picture and here I have kept the installer software. And on the left side, these are my controls. Now I will click on this option, animation particle toolbox zip. I will extract this file but before that, you have to turn off your internet connection. Then choose extract files. Yeah, okay. Files have extracted. Now, I will go to the this PC tab. Then I will go to this option. Then I will go to app data. Then roaming. And then I will go to the Adobe folder. After that, I will go to the Adobe Photoshop folder. Then you will see on the below. Here we have presets. Now I will copy these files and paste them here. Now I will open this JSX file. It is opening in Photoshop. It has opened. Now I have created a file. I will go to the window tab. Then I will click on the extensions and choose the animation particle toolbox. Now I have created a file. I will go to the window tab. Then I will click on the extensions. So we have installed this option just now. So it was our task to install this toolbox. Which is done. Now I will show you what it actually does. I am dragging this picture here. It is opening on another tab. So. I will work on this. This is the image size. I don't want this tab, so I'm going to close this tab. See, here we have the setting option. You can fix things from here. The next option is to create a brass layer. Here this option is showing what image size it can afford. This image size is 1080 pixels, 1000 or 
1440 pixels. The next option has a plus sign, which is for creating a new layer. And from here, we can select brushes. Or we have our brushes here. We can use this also. I will pick the practice brush from here. And I have picked the red color. I am applying it here. And on the shoes part. I am just selecting this part. I am just showing you this work randomly. Here we have three options. Dust, pixels and circles. You can make three particle animations from here. So, first I will show you how the dust option works. See only the parts where I have marked them are distorting and there the layer is created one by one. It is converting to an animation. I came to the highest tool. See, when I'm clicking here, these parts are going upward. And when I'm clicking it on the left side, these are going on the left side. And if I click on this, the inside parts will move. I will show you more about how this animation particle works. I hope you have understood everything properly. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to install Beta Grids Layer Creation Kit and how to use it. Hey everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. In today's class, we will see. How to install Beta Grids Layout Creation Kit and how to use it. So you can see, the file manager is already opened. I have shown you earlier. Here you will get a zip file. You will get all this on the downloadable resource file. I will show you today how to install a Beta Grids Layout Creation Kit. You will also find it on this downloadable resource file. You have to just bring it here. Before bringing it, you have to unzip it. To unzip, click on your right button. Then choose extract here option. See, their files have appeared. Then drag this beta grids JDXP file and release it on this JDXP installer. See, it is installed. Then an option will come over. Choose it. Then open the Photoshop. If you install it, after opening the Photoshop, you will not get this file. So install it then open the Photoshop. I am creating a document. So where is it? Go to the window tab. Then from extensions, choose better grids. See, an option has appeared. Here it is. Here on the right side, we have this better grids option. See? Here we have so many options over here. This is a straight line going up and down. Then this is going right and left. And then, we have like a plus sign and many other options we have here. First of all, I have clicked this option. A line has appeared in the middle. Then I have clicked on this option. It's a line from button to the top on the middle. It's a line from the bottom to the top of the middle of the artboard. See? It maintains the actual size. I don't have to make this according to the size. This is the importance of beta grids. Now, I will show you the image size. 
Here we have height and width. These grids maintain this size accordingly. These grids are created to align. Now, if you want to give a box grid, see, box grid has been created. Now, if you want to make them manually, you can just change this level count gaps. See, I'm making it 5. See, here we have 5 grids from upper to lower. I've changed the columns. Now, I will change the rows. See, here we have 5 columns and 4 rows. You can also change the gap. I've given 10 pixel gaps. And I gave 4 columns. I have increased the gap. You can just work manually. So, this is how this better grids layout creation kit works. I hope you have understood how to install it and use it. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I am also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to install Easy Cut Layer Splitting Kit and how to use it. Welcome everyone. How's everything going? Today we will see how to install an Easy Cut Layer Splitting Kit and how to use it. I have opened the files. It is already zipped. I will choose it. The right click, choose Extract Hair option. Then I will drag this option and release it on JXP installer. Now it is installed. See, I have made a mistake. The Photoshop was opened. Now I will open the Photoshop. Let's see. Can we find that file that we installed? I have opened the Photoshop. I will open the window tab. Then from the extension option, we have those three options that we have downloaded. We have the better grid option here. We have the better grid option here that I have shown you in the last class. But we can't find the file that we installed just a while ago. Why is it happening? Because the Photoshop was opened. When I was installing this file, you have to open Photoshop after installing the file. So, I will close this Photoshop now. Now, I will reopen the Photoshop. I will again create a new document. Now, if I open this window tab and choose extension, then see here, the easy cut option has appeared now. See here, we have the easy cut options template. So, you must have to reopen the Photoshop to get the new option. I picked another circle shape. Now, I will drag it on the bottom. I will rasterize the layer again. Now, I will again cut it into several pieces. I am increasing the amount. The sizes will remain the same. I'm dragging these pieces one by one. The auto selection option is on. That's why I can drag these pieces one by one. So, I hope you have understood how to install this easy cut layer splitting kit and how to use it. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to install Image Extend Clipping Expansion Kit and how to use it. Hey everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. In today's class, we will see how to install Image Extend Clipping Expansion Kit. 
and how to use it. So as always, I have opened the files. I will now extract the files here. I'm dragging it on the ZXP installer. It is installed. Now, I will reopen the Photoshop. It has opened. I will create a new document. I will again go to the window tab, then from extensions, I will choose image extended. See here, we have our image extension template. I will create a rectangle shape now. Now I will show you how to extend it. From here, you can select all or none or you can select as few as you want. I have selected these two options. Content error and create copy. I have clicked on this clip option. Now see, it has clipped. Now, I can move it everywhere. I have clipped the whole area. Now, if I pick the lasso tool and draw over it, it will not work. I will drag it here. I have created a new layer. I will give it a color. Red color. I have selected all. That's why a stroke has been created here. And I can move it. Now I will select this blue color rectangle shape layer. Now I will unselect these parts and keep this part selected. I have clicked on the clip. Now see, only these parts are clipped. The other parts are not clipped. Now, when I will drag these parts, you will see how it works. See, I'm dragging only this part. Now, I want to drag this corner part only. This right corner. I clicked on the clip. Now, I will drag with the selection tool. See, I am dragging this part. See, these three parts I have dragged. I can make these three layers a group. I can change the color also. I will bring the rectangle shape again. Now, if I click on fit space, this option, see, I can now copy this shape and I can drag this copied spaces. So this is how you can work with this option. We don't need all this but I'm showing all the options that are included in Photoshop. I don't usually use these options but you might use them in it. That's why I'm showing you this and I'm giving you these plugins that I have collected from different places. Totally free. So I hope you have understood how to install image extend clipping expansion kit and how to use it. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. 
Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to install Rare Batch Processing Kit and how to use it. Welcome everyone. How is everything going? Today we will see how to install our Rare Batch Processing Kit and how to use it. It's a plugin and I will show you how to download it and use it. I have extracted the file and installed it. And I'm going to reopen the Photoshop. I will create a new document. I have created a new layer. Now on this layer, I'm going to just draw a random shape just to show you. And every time, I'm creating a new layer here. I'm adding shapes, then text. I'm changing the color also. I'm making a group with all these layers. Now let's see, where is the file that I have downloaded a while ago? So I will go to the window tab. Then from the extension, choose the layer batch. Here is the option I have downloaded. Here is our layer batch template. Here is the option I have downloaded. Now you can give comments and do the work manually with Photoshop. Here we have so many options. See, when I click on these options one by one, here on the layer section, you will see the selected section layer group here. Like, when I click on this text option, I will show the text only. Now, I will customize this manually by giving command. From this option, I can set the color. See, I have chosen pink color from only these shapes. I will click on play button. See, they are turning into pink color. Now, I will select these layers. I am increasing the size of the shapes. I am increasing the size of the shapes from here. I clicked on the play button. See. These shapes have become big. I'm just giving commands. Now, if I decrease the size, they become small. Now, I have selected the text layers. I'm changing the rotation from here. I clicked on the play button. See, the text is rotating. So basically, this is how the layer batch works. You can work manually by giving commands. I hope you have understood how to install a layer batch processing kit and how to use it. If you have any confusion, ask me freely. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye.
how to use RenFX extension and how to use it. Welcome everyone. How is everything going? Today we will see how to install RenFX extension and how to use it. So as always, I will extract this file and put it on the ZXP file to install it. It is installed. Now again, I will reopen the Photoshop. I can open a picture from here. Yeah, I will open a picture. I will pick this eagle picture. I have download work with this picture. So I will go to the window tab from extension. I will choose BB Tools RainFX. Here is our rain effects template and from here you can turn on and off this auto update option and I'm giving a 43 degree angle from here. See, see on the right side, here the work has already started, new layers are creating. You will see a rain effect on this picture, see carefully, it is looking like it's raining. I fix the speed from here. I can change all these levels. I have decreased the speed. See, the new layers are created here. Now, it looks like the rain speed is low. Then, I have decreased the level of rain. See, the level of rain has decreased. See? I have decreased the density of rain. You can see the changes. I can increase the angle. See, it is looking like this. It is not looking good. I will again decrease the angle. It is now looking like the rain is coming straight from the sky. So, the angle decides from where the rain will come. So, I have done this work totally manually. This is how you can work with RainFX extension. I hope you have understood how to install RainFX extension and how to use it. If you have any confusion, ask me freely. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to install Ratio Switch Former Change Kit and how to use it. Hey everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. In today's class, we will see 
how to install the ratio switch from a change kit and how to use it. So, as I showed you, I am going to extract the file and put it on the JXP installer to install it. It is installed. Now, I will open the Photoshop. Now, I will create a new document from here. Now, I will create some shapes here. I'm creating some shapes and giving them colors. Then I'm going to click on the window tab. Then from extension, I'm going to choose the ratio switch this option. Here is our tab. Here, we have so many options. Adjust, set ratio, layer, then document. So, I'm going to show you something. See, if I select this layer option, I will show you the layers only. I have selected all the layers from the right side. Now, I can work on these layers. I can also select this layer separately. I can change the document's ratio also. And I can also change the ratios of these rectangle shapes. I'm changing the document ratio. I have given 5 into 5 ratio. Now, I will click on the change ratio button. See, the document ratio has changed. I will go back. Now, I will work on these layers. You can change these options also. Height Anchor. I'm going to create another new layer. Now, I'm drawing a shapes. I have drawn two different shapes on two different layers. I'm fixing the ratios of the shapes. I'm setting the ratio. Then I will click on Change Layer Ratio. See, the shapes have changed. I want to change the colors also. Then I will change the ratio again. The ratio is 1 into 1. That means, both of these ratios are same size. You can give any ratio you want. So, this is how this ratio switch from a change kit works. If you need this, you can install it and can work with this. I hope you have understood everything clearly. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to install record a layer panel sorting kit and how to use it. Hey everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. In today's class, we will see how to install a record a layer panel sorting kit and how to use it. So as always, first of all, I'm going to extract this file and put it on the JXP installer to install it. It is installed. Install is complete. Now. I will open the Photoshop. I have created a new document. See, here is a recorder files template. So, it works differently. Now, I will create some little square shapes here. I am creating background shapes. I will change the color also. One blue. One is green. Yeah. Now if I select these layers and click on these options, here we have these three background layers. I have selected them. Now if I click on these options, now see, 
These layers are changing their positions. One is going upward, another is going downward. These options are kept here as the background wise. This kit is for ordering the layer's position. So, this is how this Recorder plugin works. I hope you have understood how to install a Recorder layer panel sorting kit and how to use it. This plugin is not that important. You don't need it that much, but I have shown you how to use it. If you need it somehow, tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to install seamless pattern creation kit and how to use it. Welcome everyone. How is everything going? Today we will see how to install seamless pattern creation kit and how to use it. So I will again extract the file and install it from ZXP installer. Then I'm going to open the Photoshop. I will create a new document from here. Now, I'm going to open the window tab. Then see here. On the extension, we have our seamless pattern this option. I will show you this later. Now, I will click on this option symmetry. And from here, I will choose mandala this option. It is on 3. I'm going to increase it. I kept it on 5. It is for making pattern. So basically, I will draw on one side and I will copy on other sides also. I have picked my brass tool. I will draw a little thing here. I have created a new layer. I am going to pick a color. I have just draw a little line and see. Other sides are copying this line like this. See these classes carefully. You will need this to sell this on online. You can make these designs very easily and can sell them on online. I have just created a frame for this pattern. And then, I'm just clicking here with my brush and I'm just changing the color. This work is very easy and also you will enjoy doing this work. Yeah, this pattern is done. I have removed the frame. Now, I can do many things with this design. I can increase or decrease the size. Now, I will go to the window tab. Then from extension, I will choose seamless pattern creation kit. This option. Here is our template. Here, we have so many options. I will increase this path white option. I'm going to click on this preview option. Let's see how it is. See, this designs has copied. We have so many same designs. Now, I will click on this layer. Here, it on 34. I can increase or decrease it. See, now it is on 10. If I increase it more, see, this design copies have decreased. I have decreased on 75. It will increase if I increase this level. And this design's copy amount will increase if I decrease this level. You can make it 200 pixel. See how it is looking. When you will drag this artboard, you will see the other copies. You can't see the whole thing like this. So just extend the artboard as big as you want.
Now you can see the whole artboard. So this is how the seamless pattern plugin works. I hope you have understood how to install a seamless pattern creation kit and how to use it. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to install Shadow Photoshop extension and how to use it. Welcome everyone. How's everything going? Today we will see how to install Shadow Photoshop extension and how to use it. First of all, I have unzipped the zipped file and I'm going to extract this file. Put it on the ZXP installer to install it. Installing is completed. Then, I will go to the Photoshop. I'm going to reopen the Photoshop. Yeah, Photoshop is open now. I'm going to create a document. Now, I have written O later here. And I have placed a triangle shape over it. I'm giving it a color now. These two shapes are in one layer. Now, I will go to the window tab. Then from the window tab, we have extension. From extension, choose shadow extension, this option. Here we have the shadow extension template. See, here we have angle, scale, then opposite these options. You can turn on and off this auto update option. Then see, I'm fixing the angle to make a shadow. See, a shadow has been created in 64 angles. And you can increase or decrease this scale also. The shadow will create angle wise. The blur is on 10 and the scale is on 53. You can change anything as you want. I have increased the blur size. Then I have decreased the opacity level. After decreasing the opacity, the shadow now is looking natural. You can work manually with this option. I'm decreasing the scale level now. Now, I will decrease the opacity more. So, you can give a natural shadow with this option manually. Sometimes, we can't give the shadow properly. Like, it takes time to give a proper shadow. This option is special for giving shadows properly. So, this is how this plugin works. I hope you have understood how to install shadow Photoshop extension and how to use it. If you have any confusion, just ask on the q and section or take a screenshot and post it on our Facebook group. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye.
how to install shadow wavy realistic blur shadow kit and how to use it hey everyone i hope everyone is doing well in today's class we will see how to install shadow wavy realistic blur shadow kit and how to use it how can we make different types of shadows i have shown you in the last class how we can easily make shadows with a plugin today i will show you the easy way to do it so as always i have extracted this zip file that i will give you then i put it on the jxp installer and installed it and then i'm going to open the photoshop i have created a new document then i'm going to write a letter o and i'm changing the color Yeah, okay. I have increased the size now. Then I will go to the shapes tab. Here we have so many types of icons. I'm searching for the airplane icon. Here we have our airplane icon. I'm going to drag it here. Now, I will align these two. Align done. Now, I will set them. Here we have our shadow fee options template. Now, I'm going to work with this levels. I'm fixing the angle. Then I will increase the distance. Then I'm going to click on this option, create shadow. Now see on the right side. Here some work has been done. I'm going to click on create shadow again. Now see, the shadow has been created on the right side. It is at minus 15 degree angle. Now, I will change the angle. I'm decreasing the angle. No, I'm going to increase it. I'm going to keep it at 35. Now, I will again click on create shadow. The shadow has been created at 35 degree angle. Now, I have decreased my opacity. Now, it is looking like a real shadow. I have removed it. I'm going to rotate it now. Now, I will again create another shadow. The angle is at minus 35 degrees. But see, the shadow is looking weird because the shadow of the plane is appearing on the shadow. Now I can create another shadow. I have fixed all the levels. Now see. The shadow has created perfectly. There is no fault. You have to just change these levels and can make a shadow. So, if you want to make a shadow, you have to install this extension and you can work manually with this as I'm showing you. So this is how this option works. If you face any problem with this classes like you don't find these plugins or your plugin is not working or any kind of problem, you can post them on our Facebook group or take a screenshot on the Q&A section.
I'm going to surely help you out. Or better, you should post it on the Facebook group. This is how your activity will increase. Plus, you will learn fast. I hope you have understood everything. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. Hi there. So in this advanced part, I'm going to show you that how to create the nature isolation picture. You can see this picture that from the first it has no bubbles, house, man, anything. And we will add this step by step. End of this part, you will able to create this amazing image or something like this type of thing. It's so much interesting to create this kind of thing with some of your basic Photoshop skills, which we will cover in this first part. I'm so much excited to share with you this. So don't waste much of your times and let's get started. Nature Isolation Place Hey everyone, how is everything going? Today we will see how to create a nature isolation place. So first, I'm going to choose an artboard size from here. Then I will create an artboard. Now, I want to bring a background here. So I picked a picture from a background. This is the picture. I'm transforming it. I'm fixing the background with the artboard. Okay? Now see, this sun is on the left side. Now I want to bring mountains here. Here I have a picture of mountains. I picked this picture. And now, I'm going to fix it here. Now, I will go to the select tab. Then I will choose the subject option. Here we have the mountains as a subject. So, it selected the mountain. I'm fixing this part here. Then I copied this layer by pressing on Ctrl plus J. Then I'm going to delete the background layer. Delete is done. Now we have only the selection part here. Now I'm going to adjust this mountain. I opened this curve tab. I can fix the color with this curve tab. I drag the dark mode line and I also drag the light mode line. And it is an RGB mode. Now I will go to the hue and saturation mode. Then I will fix the color from here. I'm increasing and decreasing these levels. I'm transforming it. Now I will make this mountain horizontal. Then I will decrease the size. OK. Then I will flip the background horizontally. So. I will click on flip horizontal. Okay. See, now the sun is now on the right side because I want some space on the left side. Now, I will work over this layer. I have selected this tool and I'm going to increase the sunlight with this tool. I want it to look like the sunlight is falling on this mountain. Then I pick the barn tool and I made this side a bit darker. Then I will bring a picture of grass. Now, I will mask it. So, I clicked on select and mask. Then I will mask it. I have increased these levels. Then similarly, I will press on Ctrl plus J and delete the background layer. Now, I will transform this layer too. I'm setting this over this mountain. Now see, I messed up the side of this mountain. So it's a problem. I have to fix this. Now I will do some adjustments with this layer. Now I'm going to erase this part with my erase tool. Now I will create a new layer. Then I selected this new layer. And then 
I pressed on my left button and ELT. Now I'm adjusting the brush tool. Then I'm making this part black. I selected the new layer and I'm working on it. But it is too dark. So I'm going to decrease the opacity. Now say, the nature isolation is highlighting. Now I open the hue and saturation tab. And I'm adjusting the grass color with the sky color. I'm keeping it a bit brown. Now it's looking good. Now I will increase the sunlight here over these grasses. Then I will erase this part a little bit. Now it is looking perfect. I cannot see any faults here. Okay? Now I want to bring a house here. Here's a picture of a big house. I will select the subject now. Then I will place it on the grass. I clicked on Ctrl plus J. Then I created a new layer here. Then I again deleted the background layer. Then I'm transforming it. Now, I'm setting it over the grass part. Then I'm adjusting the color from this curve tab. I have created another layer. I'll make shadows on this part with a brush tool. I'm making the shadow on the opposite side of the sunlight. Now I'm decreasing the opposite. Now it is looking like natural. Now I'm erasing the problematic parts. It is looking like the house has grown from the grass. Yeah, almost done. Now I want to bring a tray because we definitely want trees in nature. I open this picture on a new tab. Now, from here I will go to the channels directly. If you can't find it, go to the window tab. Then from there, choose the channel. Now, I will mask this tree. I will just click on this last layer. See, after selecting, it has become black and white. Then, if I press on the ALT button and click again on this layer, the mask is done. I have to inverse it now. To inverse, you have to pick the selection tool. Then click on your right button on the subject. Then choose select inverse. Then you will say, the selection is only around the tray. Now I will press on Ctrl plus J. Then I will copy this picture. Then I created another layer. Then I drag this picture here. Then I am transforming it. Okay. Then I will drag this layer to the bottom. Now say, the tree went behind the house. Then I am adjusting the tree color. Then again, I will increase the brightness. 
Now say, everything is matching with each other. I'm going to adjust the tree color a little bit more. Then I will bring another picture here, which is a picture of a cameraman. So, I will click on the selected subject. Only the man has been selected. Then similarly, I will click on Ctrl plus J and copy it and delete the background. Then I will flip it horizontally. Then I transformed it. And now, I'll be set him here. I can again transform it. Now I'm checking everything. I pick the brass tool. And now, I'm going to give a shadow here. And the opposite is 39%. So, it's looking natural. So our work is almost complete. Now, I want to bring bubbles here. So I brought a picture of a big bubble here. I'm going to make it a subject again. And similarly, I will delete the background. Oh yeah, I'm facing a problem here. I'm using the paint tool here. So, I'm going to fix this with the paint tool, like this. And it is on the path mode. I'm just clicking and dragging the line. You have to keep the selection on path mode. Then I will make a selection. I clicked on the right button. Then I selected the subject from the selection. Ok. Selection is done. Then similarly, I will press on Ctrl plus J and delete the background. I am transforming the size of this bubble. I am adjusting it. Yeah, okay. Then I will drag this layer to the bottom. Then I will open the blend mode and select the overlay option. Now it is looking like a real bubble. Now, the lower part is looking a bit awkward. So I am moving this bubble to see which side will look good. I will erase some parts from the lower portion. I will go to the curve tab again. I am increasing and decreasing the levels. I have adjusted it. Now say, it is looking like the whole house trees are inside the bubble. It's looking so beautiful. I will again fix the level from the curve tab. I'm decreasing the lightness from the hue and saturation tab. Now I will increase the sunlight with this tool. Like this. See? I'm lighting only some parts, not the whole thing.
There will be some shadows also. Okay, now I want to add some sparkles here. Then I created a new layer. I picked the brush tool. Now I'm drawing a sun here. I drew it with an orange color. Then over it, I added a white color. Then I decreased the size. Now, just press ALT and make some copies of it and just decrease the size. I'm adjusting the sparkles. Now, I will select all the copies and then I will merge them. Then I copied them again and dragged them on the left side. Now, see how beautiful it is. So, this is how you can create a nature isolation place. It was a very interesting work I guess. I hope you all enjoyed it. I will give you these pictures on the downloadable resource file. You can download them. So you have to download these pictures and make a nature isolation place like this and post it on our Facebook group. That's it. I hope you have understood everything clearly. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. Roads women underwater. Welcome everyone. How's everything going? Let's start our today's class. I will create an artboard. I'm setting the height and width 15 by 22. So, this is the artboard. Now I'm going to bring a picture here. A picture of road. So, I opened this picture. I'll transform it. I want to decrease the size. I'm increasing the upper portion. I'm just dragging this side. I picked my selection tool and I will select this part. Then I'm rasterizing this layer. Then I deleted this part. No. I'll go a little bit higher, then I'll delete it. I will go to the select tab, then I will click on the sky option. It has not appeared. So, I'm going to select it perfectly. I'm matching the borders. Like this and press ALT to minus selection. Then I will delete them. I have deleted multiple times. Now, it is clear. I'm going to open a picture. This is the picture. Then I will pick the rectangular shape. 
then I will select the sky. That's it. Then I will make some copies of this. I will adjust this one first. Then I will make a copy. Then I will adjust it. Then I will make another copy. And I will flip it horizontally. And I am adjusting it. Then I am erasing it lightly with the erase tool. Look, I am just erasing the edges. The lower part is done. Then the upper portion. I selected the layer. Then similarly, I am erasing this part. Then I am going to merge them. To merge, press Ctrl plus E. Then loop. I drag the road picture layer upper and drag the sky layer bottom so that the gap gets invisible. Then I will pick the shape tool. Then I made a shape here. Then I drag this layer upper. Then I will choose a blend mode from here. Then I will open another picture here. I will keep the size. Now I will select the subject. This way you can easily select the subject. Yeah, the subject is selected. Now I want to mask it. To mask, I clicked on my right button and choose this option select and mask. Then from presets, I will choose the second option. Here we have so many options. Then I will click on Ctrl plus J and I will make a copy of this picture. Then I deleted the background. Now see. We have the girl only. Now I pick the brush tool. Then I created a new layer. I increase the hardness of my brush. I increase the darkness of the color. Now I'm drawing a line here. Now I will bring another picture here. I'm placing it. Now, I will go to the layer. Then this option will appear. I will click on the ALT button. It will mask it. Masking done. Then I am adjusting the hardness of the brush. Now I will erase lightly. You have to customize the brush. I have shown you how to customize the brush on my earlier class. You have to just click on right button and ALT button and drag. I am erasing here lightly. Then I selected these two layers. Then I'm dragging them upper and lower. I'm adjusting them. Now I'm adjusting the waves. I will keep it like this. Then I will press on Ctrl plus J. And I will make a copy of this layer. Then I will click on the right button. Then I will rasterize this layer. Then I can erase here again. I am erasing this part. I have to match these two pictures because manipulation means perfectly matching. I am dragging the upper layer to the bottom. Now, the girl is visible. Then I will choose the marquee tool. I am selecting this part. Then I will turn off the visibility option. I 
I will sell it further. Then I will again erase lightly with the erase tool. Then I copied this layer after clicking on Ctrl plus J. Then I drag the carpet layer a bit upper. Then I'm decreasing the opposite of the erase tool. Then I'm erasing a little bit. The face should be visible. So I'm erasing it lightly. Then I created another layer from here. Then I will create some shadows down here. I'm creating it with a brush and a black color. Then I'm adding a light color here. Then I'm decreasing the opposite of this part. Now, it's looking real and natural. Now we have to bring bubbles here. I want to add bubbles on the water. So, I'm going to bring this picture here. Now I'm adjusting it. Then I rasterize this layer. Now I will again erase some parts. And I increase the opacity to 100%. Now I'm erasing. Then I will drag this layer to the bottom. Now, these bubbles are visible. I have copied this layer by pressing on Ctrl plus J. Now, I'm removing it more. I'm erasing lightly. I decrease the opacity. I have to match the subject with the background. And all perfectly. We will focus on the hair. As she's under the water, her hair will float. So, I will warp it. I have selected the hair and I'm just dragging it right and left side. I'm just warping it. Almost done. And then, I will also warp the dress. So now, look how real it is looking like. Now, I will go to the image. Then I will go to the adjustment. Then I will select curves. The shortcut is Ctrl plus M. Now I am adjusting the levels. Then I'm just shaking everything. I decrease the opposite of the erase tool. Now, I will again erase a little bit. Now I will bring another picture. A picture of a dolphin. Here it is. Then I will select this part with the marquee tool. Then I will press on Ctrl plus J and copy it. Then I deleted the background. Then I will erase the extra part. I'll drag it down. 
and I'm again erasing it lightly. Then I'm adjusting it. I will drag this layer upper. I will keep it here. I will again drag this layer bit low. Now, it is matching. I will erase some parts. Then I will go to the image tab. Then I will select adjustment. Then I will open curves. Now I'm adjusting the levels. Yeah. Almost done. Then I'm going to select these layers except the sky and road layer. Then I'm dragging them to the upper. Now I will bring this all layers into one layer as duplicates. For doing it, I have to press on Ctrl plus ALT plus Shift plus E. Now see, layer 5 has been created. Now I will pick a solid color from here. Then from blend mode, I will pick the lighten option. Then from blend mode, I will pick the lighten option. Then I will choose a solid color. Then I will go to the camera raw. So I will press on Shift plus Ctrl plus A buttons. Here we have so many options. Now I'm changing the levels from saturation. I want to bring the blue color more. Then I'm fixing the vibrance. So this was our class. So it was a road with cars. I placed a sky here. Then I placed a girl who is floating under the water. Then I added bubbles and dolphins. Then I added effects. I corrected the color combination. Then I used camera raw options here. This was the manipulation. So I hope you all have understood everything clearly. Tell me what do you think. Write a review when you can. I am also available for questions. Send me direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to make a poster? Welcome everyone. I hope you all are doing well.
In today's class, we will see how to make a poster. I'm going to do manipulation edit on a strawberry picture and then I will make it a poster. This is our interface. I'm creating a new artboard. Here, the height is large and the weight is small because the posters have a large height. Here we have pixels. You can make it inches. Okay, then create. Yeah, this is our artboard. Now, I'm going to work over this. Now, I want to give a solid color to this background. So, I gave a solid color to this background. I want to take a pink color. This one. Okay, now. I'm going to bring a picture here. I'm going to open the strawberry picture. Yeah. Here we have our strawberry picture. Now, I'm going to pick this quick selection tool. And I'm going to select it. Or, I can normally select it. Then choose subject. It will select the subject, which is the strawberry. Now, I'm going to hold it with my left button. And drag it here, on this background. Yeah, it has appeared here. Now, I will transform it by pressing on Ctrl plus T. I'm adjusting. Yeah, this. I want to make slice of the strawberry. So how can I do it? I can do it with the paint tool or the lasso tool. I'm going to use this paint tool. Now, I made it path mode. I'm going to work only on this strawberry layer. I clicked here, then drag. And again clicked here. I made it like a round and selected it. Then I clicked on my right button. Then I'm going to select this make selection tool. Then I'm going to select this make selection option. Okay. The selection is done. See? The lower piece of the strawberry is separated. Then I'm dragging this upper part. See? Here we have two layers. One is the upper part. And the other layer is the lower part. Now, I want to cut another piece. So, similarly, I'm going to click and drag it like a round shape. Then again, I'm going to select make selection. Yeah. Now we have another slice here. We have three pieces and three layers. I'm going to cut another slice now. Again. I did make a selection. Now, we have four pieces of the strawberry. Now, I'm going to align these pieces. I can transform these pieces also. Or, I can rotate them. I will look better. I'm rotating these slices. Okay, done. If I select these four layers and drag them, these all four slices will move. Now, I can transform or rotate this whole thing. I have rotated it. Now, I will make another new layer from here. Then, I am going to pick a brass tool from here. Here we have so many brushes. This one. 
I'm going to pick this brush. I'm going to select a color also. And I'm doing it on the new layer. And this layer is under the strawberry layer. I'm going to work only on the layer, which is under the strawberry layer. See, I applied an effect here. The effect is behind the slices of the strawberry. It is looking beautiful, right? I'm zooming in, so that I can see properly. Then I will get in shape. I have turned off and on the visibility option to see the changes. Now, I'm going to just make shapes over the slice. It's because I want to show the inside part of the slice of strawberry. I will be dark red. See, I'm applying a color now. Yeah, okay. Then this one. Similarly, I will make a shape and give it a color. Just click and drag. Yeah, done. I made three inside shapes for these three slices. Now, I want to bring here some clip arts here. I want it to look like the strawberry is sliced now. And the juice is coming inside from it. So, I'm going to open two clip arts from here. Here we have two clips art. One is blue, the other is pink. Now, I'm going to adjust them here. And now, I'm transforming it, and I'm adjusting it perfectly. I warped it. I have shown you this already. How can we bring warp option from transforming? So, I'm warping it. Work done. Then I'm going to drag this clipper layer below the strawberry layer. Because I want it to look like the juice is coming from inside. Now I can fix the color. I'm going to change the color. I'm showing you these layers. How was it and all? If I drag this clipper more below, you will see there is a problem. So this place is perfect for this clipper. Now I will go to the hue and saturation tab. I'm going to change the color from here. I'm going to make it pink. Yeah, okay. I have made a mask on this clip art. I picked the brush tool. I'm fixing the brush size. Hardness and spacing. I will now erase it. I can decrease the opacity before it. I will now erase it perfectly. Then I increase the opacity. I pick the lasso tool. I'm going to select only this part.
I have copied it. Now I'm transforming it. Now I'm going to add it with this part here. So this is how we can use clip arts. It's looking beautiful, right? Then I'm going to hold this clip art and adjust it between these two slices. After that, I will transform it. I will warp it. I'm just warping it like this. Yeah, warping done. Then I'm going to take this layer above this layer. I'm going to make another new layer. Now, I want to give a shadow here with the brush tool. I pick the dark pink color. And just clicking here. Now, I will give a shadow on this part. I have selected again and again. I will give shadow with the brush tool. I messed up. No problem. I erased it. Okay, done. So, only the last slice is left. I'm flipping it and then transforming it. And I'm fixing it here. I warped it again. Then I'm going to pick this layer and drag it below this layer. I'm adjusting it perfectly. I have to make another. I copied this clip art. I flipped it. Now, I will adjust it here. Then I drag this layer below. I masked it. Again, I pick the brush tool. I erase this part. Now, I want to give a shadow here. On this layer, I'm going to give shadow.
I walked it again. Now I can change the mode. No, I'm going to keep this mode. Now I will change the background color. I'm going to pick this color. Then I'm going to work with this below part for the poster. I'm going to add text here. It was right in love. I will make it strawberry. I set it here. I'm going to warp it. I'm warping this text like this. I have shown you already how to do warp. I increase the horizontal destruction level. Okay. I'm going to again transform it. Now, I will select all these layers and I'm going to adjust them. But I feel like here we have some problems. I'm going to remove it. It's looking better now. So, I have changed the text position and I added the default text below. I have shown you how to add text on an image. See, here we have two backgrounds here. One is the normal background, another one is a rounded rectangle background. Now, if I drag this background here, it will look better I guess. It will look like a poster. So, this is how we can make a poster with manipulation art. If you have any confusion with this work, please ask me on the Q&A section. Or just post on the Facebook group. Tell me, what do you think? Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. I'm going to select this blend and emboss option. And I can add some effects from here. Make text effect templates in How to make text effect templates in Adobe Photoshop. Hey everyone, I hope everything is going alright. In today's class we will see how to make text effect templates, how can we make it like a 3D effect and we will also keep it as ready made so that we can use it anytime. You can use it anytime and you can also change the font style. So let's start. I opened a new file here. Here is my artboard. I'm writing on the background layer. I have written text effects. Alright, now I'm going to work on this text. I clicked on the window tab. Then I clicked on the style option. Here is the style tab. Here we have legacy styles, natural, fur, then fabric. I can choose this one. You can pick any of them. Here we have different types of effects. I'm going to pick this one. I removed it. Now, I'm going to modify this text. I will add effects on this and I'm going to make it ready-made. I'm going to keep this font. 
we have a layer over the background here. Now, I will create a new layer. And I'm going to give a name to this layer. Before that, I will make it red. And I will convert it to a smart object. This layer's name is Your Text. And I guess you all know what is a smart object. That to make a mockup, you have to convert the layer into a smart object. If you double click on the smart object, it will take you to a new tab. Now, I will again pick this text tool and go to write text effects. I saved it. And I will go to the main tab. I'm fixing the position of the text. See, we have a tab here. But now, I'm in my main tab. Now, if I want, I can add here stroke, drop shadow, or anything. However, I unlock the background layer. Then I'm going to delete this layer. Now, we only have this text effect layer. We have nothing in the background. Now, I can add a solid color here. From here, I can create a solid color. I pick this color. Now, now I can give a gradient feel. I'm going to pick the gradient color from here. I pick this color. The lower portion is black and the upper portion is dark blue. Now, I'm going to change these options. Angle, Style and Scale. Just see what I'm doing. Take ideas so that you can also make this text effects. Now, I will make a group with these two layers and I name this group BG. I'll again change the color from here. Now, now I'll make a copy of this text by processing on Ctrl plus J. And I will drag this copy text here. I'm going to change the name. Now I will make it a group. I can make some copies of this layer named 1. You have to select this layer, then press Ctrl plus right arrow, lower arrow. I made almost 30 copies here. Now, the very first layer is our original layer. But after that layer, all the layers are duplicate because they are copies. I have made it red so that you can recognize the original file easily. I will again add gradients here. We have so many presets here. Here we have so many color combinations. I clicked on this orange file. See, here we have orange color combinations. Okay, it was ready made. Now I'm going to change these options. I changed it to radial. Now see, when I'll go to this layer, we can see an arrow here. And now if I press on the ALT button, this gradient color will transfer into the text. Now, I want to create another gradient effect. I selected the 3D layer. Then from here, I selected the gradient option. 
Here is your gradient fill tab. I am going to give another preset from here. I am going to keep the older one. Now, I will again similarly attach this gradient effect with this text. But see, now it's not looking good. The text is not clear. Now, after selecting this text, I'm going to drag it a bit upper. It is not working. I will click on the grid and fill. Now if I drag with my left button, now it is changing. And if I add drop shadow here, it is not looking good. So, I'm not going to add this. I have to make another template for the drop shadow. So, it is a difficult task. I drag this layer here. I name this layer shadow. Then I increase the opacity, then scale, etc. I change these options. Now I'm dragging this tab here. Now if I increase the size, it will look like a shadow. Okay. Now from this layer style tab, I'm going to select this blend and emboss option. And I can add some effects from here. I'm increasing and decreasing these options. It gives a shiny effect on the upper option. Like this. Now I will work with the brush tool here. I have entered into the smart object after double clicking on the left button. I turned off the text effect text visibility option. Now I am writing high here. Then I'm drawing a sun. I'm writing world here. I pressed on Ctrl plus S and I saved it. Then I return to the main tab. See, the effect is transformed into the text. Now I will make some stairs here. I saved it. Again I will go to the main tab. I'm going to change the color. So I hope you have understood how to make text effect templates. You can ask me questions on our Facebook group or in the Q&A section. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. 
Send me direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to make snow camera work manipulation edit with masking? Welcome everyone. I hope you all are doing well. In today's class, we will see how to make snow camera work manipulation editing with masking. So, first of all, I'm going to open an image from my file. I'm going to add a snow work picture with a camera picture. It will be going to be a manipulation editing after doing masking. This is our picture of a camera. Now, I'm going to adjust the snow walk picture with this. Now, I'm going to open a snow walk picture separately. I opened it here. Now, I'm going to drag this picture with holding on my left button and put it over this camera picture. Yeah, okay. Now, I'm clicking on Ctrl plus T and transforming this picture. I have adjusted. Then I'm going to decrease the opacity. Now I'm fixing this picture perfectly. I will increase the opacity again. I have picked the rectangular tool. I'm going to select this area because I want that. This road has to start more from the back side as I transform the picture. The snow walk picture is more like going upward. That's why I have to take this area further. I have selected this area. Then I'll go to the edit tab. I will click on this option, content hour fill. This tab has opened. On the right side, we have the template. And on the left side, we have a work. See on the right side, the area that I had selected before is now filled with the road. And on the left side, it is our original file. Now, I will press OK. I have copied the content and just increased this area. I have nothing to do here. So, I have pressed OK. Yeah, now done. Now see this picture. The size was small before, but now it got large. No one will understand that. I have added something on this picture. Now, I have to just adjust these two pictures. I'm going to fix these two layers. Layer 1 and Layer 1 copy. I'm going to merge these two. You have to just select these two layers. And then, click on that option and merge them. On the background, we have the camera lens and a picture of a camera. And on the layer 1, copy layer, we have the snow walk picture. Now, I'm holding the snow walk picture and just adjusting it, like this. And now I'm decreasing the opacity a little bit. I'm going to keep it like this. Now I want that. It will look like the snow walk picture will come from the camera lens. I want to make artificial nose here. So, I'm going to pick the clone stamp tool. I have increased the brush size. Now. I'm just making a clone here on this corner. Just drag and click on your right button. You have to click on the real snow once before making snow. See, it is increasing on the sides. I'm making a clone and this corner and the side areas are increasing. I'm fixing the brush size from here. Now, I have clicked here with the clone stamp tool and I picked one part. And now, I'm going to just click here with the right button. Yeah. Done. Now this corner. Again, I'm going to make clones here also. It will look like this picture was always like this. Nothing has added here. Now I'm going to do masking here. Yeah, done. Yeah, done. I picked the brush tool. I decreased the opacity.
I'm going to fix the background and foreground color. And I have fixed the brush size and hardness. I kept the background color white and foreground color black. Now I'm having selected this layer and just erasing this part. Erase carefully. I erase this part. I'm increasing the opacity because it will be easier for me to see parts. I'm just erasing this camera sides only. Then I will show you what I have done to make it smooth and natural. I'm going to just keep the lens glass part only. See, I have messed up this part. So I'm going to go back to the previous part after pressing on Ctrl plus Z. Then I'm going to again erase this part carefully. This mistake will happen for sure. You have to just press Ctrl plus Z to solve this mistake. Yeah, almost done. Again, I'm erasing a little bit. I turned off the visibility option. Now I'm selecting this lens glass area with my quick selection tool. But see, it is not selecting the area properly. So. I'm going to click the marquee eclipse tool and I'm going to select this area with this tool. Yeah, it is selected. Now I'm just adjusting it perfectly. Yeah, done. I turned on the visibility option. Now, I'm going to erase the sides. I want to make it look natural. Before erasing, this area was selected before. But I want to select the outside area. I want to do inverse. Inverse means, the area I have selected is a snow walk area. But the inverse will select the area from outside to inside the artboard. Except the circle area. To inverse, click on right button of your mouse. Then some options will appear. Then select the inverse option. You can also use a shortcut, which is Shift plus Ctrl plus I. So I did the inverse. Then I'm going to pick this tool. I have added another round shape here. Then I pick the lasso tool. With this tool, I'm going to select only this road area. Then I have mixed these two parts. If you change the background and foreground color, you will see the change. I have just mixed them. Now I'm going to fix the background and foreground color. Just press X to change the color. I have changed the color. Now see, this snow walk picture is adjusted with the camera lens perfectly. Now it is looking like this man is snow walking and it is going inside the camera lens. And this lens is looking like a cave and he's going inside it. Now I pressed on Ctrl plus D and removed the selection area. Now see. Some areas have gaps here. I'm going to just pick the brush tool and erase this area like this. I'm fixing the hardness and erasing again. Yeah, almost done. See, here we have some faults. I'm going to pick the clone stamp tool again 
and I will increase this area more. For this, I have to select the left area. I'm just clicking here and its clones are creating. Now it is perfectly done. It is looking like a man is snow walking and going inside the camera lens. A snow filled road has gone inside the camera lens. And now, if I want to mix these two pictures more smoothly, I can change the color. From this color lookup option, you can give many effects. I'm selecting one by one. It is beautiful. Then this effect. This one. But this one is a bit darker. I'm selecting one by one. It's beautiful. Then this effect. This one. But this one is a bit darker. I like this one actually. So, I'm going to keep it. See, now it's looking real and natural. These two pictures mixed with one another perfectly. Here we have a little bit of faults. So, I'm going to erase this part with my brush tool. Like this. Now it is totally fine. Looking so beautiful. I hope you have understood how to make snow camera work manipulation editing with masking. If you have any confusion with this work, please ask me on the Q&A section or just post on the Facebook group. I have shown you this manipulation. Now you have to make a new manipulation. You have to try to make these manipulations. I have added here a snow work road. You can add a train line and create manipulation. By following this class, then you have to post it on our Facebook group. Tell me, what do you think? Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. It's looking better now. So, I have changed the text position and I added the default text below. I have shown you how to add text on an image. See, here we have two backgrounds here. One is the normal background, another one is a rounded rectangle background. Now, if I drag this background here, it will look better I guess. It will look like a poster. So, this is how we can make a poster with manipulation art. If you have any confusion with this work, Please ask me on the Q&A section or just post on the Facebook group. Tell me, what do you think? Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye. How to install and use Photoshop Actions Welcome everyone. In today's class we will see how to install and use Photoshop Action in Adobe Photoshop. So firstly, I'm going to open a picture from my file. Yeah, here is your picture. Now, I'm going to apply the Photoshop action on this picture. But now, I don't have the Photoshop action. So, for Photoshop action, I have to go to the Google Chrome browser. So, here is your Google Chrome. I searched for Photoshop action. Then I'll go to the image section. Here on the top, you will get so many categories of actions. Here we have drawing, hand drawing, then glitch, shimmer, ATC. And here we have the actions. I will pick one and show you how to do that. And you have to choose yours and do the work and post it on our Facebook group. So I'm going to choose this one. I will open this link. I clicked on it. 
we're in the new tab. So the name of this website is fripsdeviant.com. You can get so many websites like this. When you will search for Photoshop action on Google and you will understand what type of work is Photoshop action. Here, here you can say, I'm going to click on this Google Drive sign. So here they have given the pictures for us for free. It is not paid. So you can download it without any cost. So I'm going to click on this download sign. Then I will click on download anyway. It is downloading. Yeah, it is downloaded. So I'll go to files. Here's the file. I will unzip it. I will click on extract files. Here is the folder. See, here we have so many files. One is brush, the newcomer Photoshop actions pattern. I'm going to select these three files. Then I will drag them and reel them in a Photoshop tab. Now, they want permissions. So I get the permissions. Now I will go to the window tab. Then I will choose action. Here is the action tab. Here we have so many actions but I can't find them here. So I will leave this action. Now I will drag them one by one. So I drag the brush file. But it is not working. I will try again. I'm going to double click with my left button on this file. Now it's opening. Yeah, done. I will go to the window tab. Then we have brushes section here. Here is your brush tab. I will go to the bottom. Yeah. Here we have brush tool. This is our brush file that we have dragged here. Then I will open this newcomer Photoshop action file. I am going to double click it. It will open in Photoshop. Then I will go to the window tab, then action. See, it is opening. Here is the file. So you can't drag the files on the Photoshop. You have to just double click on the file. Then this pattern file. Again, I am going to double click on this file. And it is also opening. Yeah, done. But we will not find it on the action tab. We have to go to this patterns tab. Beside the gradient tab. See on the button, here is your file pattern too. So we have found all three files. Now we will apply these actions on this picture. So this is our picture. Now I am going to select this quick selection tool. I will select only this girl. After selecting, I'm masking it. Now, it was in the background actually. Now, I will create a new layer here. This one. I've turned the background into the black color. Then I'm going to unlock the background. I will create a new layer here. Here we have three layers. Now, I will merge these two layers. I have shown you how to do merge. I changed the name of this layer. I named this layer background. But the background is unlocked here. We have to lock the background. For that, you have to click on the layer panel, then choose new. 
then click on pattern. It is locked now. Then after locking, we will select this layer. For selecting, you have to press on the ALT button. Then click on your left button. Then I will make it red. After selecting, press on ALT plus delete. See, the foreground color is selected and it is red. Now, we have to change the name of this layer. Just like we named a layer brush. See, I created a new layer. I'm going to name it DNS. Now, after selecting this DNS layer, I will pick the brush tool. And select a color from here. And I will draw two lines here. Now, I turned on the visibility option of this middle layer. Now I will go to the window tab, then this action tab. Here I will find the display button. When I click on the display button, you will see so many layers will start to create automatically. After that, you will see that the action has been applied. See here, so many layers are created. Yeah, it's almost done. Okay, done. See, now it has stopped. So this is our Photoshop action. And this layers together created three groups here. I made a group here. Now, if you turn on and off this visibility option, you will see the difference. So. This is how we can install and use Photoshop Actions. I hope you have understood everything clearly. You can ask me questions on our Facebook group or in the Q&A section. Tell me what you think. Write a review when you can. I'm also available for questions. Send me a direct message anytime. Stay healthy. Goodbye.
No, 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 no,